and veterans render a hat salute and remove your hats and the Tennessee Army National Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Mike Rye from Van Zandt Church of Christ in Van Zandt, Virginia offers our invocation. Dear God, we thank you for our host and our sponsor today and we thank you for this beautiful day that you've provided us for racing. We pray that you will protect all the participants of today's event. And God, we thank you especially for so many individuals who lay their lives on the line every day in protecting us, our soldiers, our policemen, our firemen, and many, many others. And we pray this prayer today, God, in the name of your son, Jesus, who is our ultimate provider and protector through his grace. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome Claire Dunn. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's less gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the hope Well done as Matt Kenseth, who's had success here before, looks on, and Martin Truex Jr. hoping to appear in victory lane.
Let's take a look at the McDonald's path to the prize. Matt Kenseth won this race last year. He won it from the pole, and no pole winner has won since Matt Kenseth won at Michigan. That was in August. And he is not on the pole, but he is on the front row for today, getting ready to go 500 laps. Our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Daytona 500 winner Denny Hamlin. He was the fastest in final practice. Remember, he had neck spasms that didn't allow him to finish this race last year. Young Eric Jones had to hop in his car, but he's ready to go the full ride today. Kurt Busch starts 26th. He's won more races at Bristol than any other track. That's five for the one time past champion. And Jimmy Johnson, old six time, not one of his better tracks. He's only won here once, and that was six years ago. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 Nationwide Chevrolet with Peyton Manning on hand to root him on, looking for his first victory of the season. So is Matt Kenseth, who's been close, part of Joe Gibbs and their successful run. Joe Gibbs racing with four starters in the top five, starting at the back of the field is Danica Patrick, getting ready for the roar of the engines at a place they like to call Thunder Valley, Bristol, Tennessee. And now, for the most famous words of motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, six-time Food City 500 winner and NASCAR Hall of Fame inductee, Rusty Wallace. Race fans, you ready to get this party started? Drivers, start your engines! Yeah, we're ready to roll. Michael Walter, Chris Myers watching the race alongside with you, and he's got the football with him, signed by Peyton Manning and Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm ready to roll. We're going to auction this off for charity as well. Uh, good catch out there. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on the drivers who haven't won yet, so let's welcome in the booth Jeff Gordon, Darrell Waltrip, and Mike Joy. Thank you, Chris. Beside me, 17 victories among these two legends of Bristol. Who better to explain whether this track is more mentally or physically demanding? 125 mile an hour laps. You rush off into those corners, bank steeper than the the roof of your house. Yeah, I, I, I like to I like the pressure aspect of it. I like to get behind the guy. I like to get that bumper right up on his back end and just give him a little nudge and get him nervous and let him make a mistake. Is this physical or mental here? This would be physical. <laughs> but because of the physical aspect of it, it makes it more mentally tough as well. And so you're pounding into these high bank corners for a, a thousand times, twice every lap, for 500 laps. I'm telling you, mentally, this is one of the toughest places. And I've got this guy pushing me and shoving me and putting more pressure on me. And then also, i got to come down pit road for 35 miles per hour. I know how you can make those mistakes, because I made them. <laughs> well, <laughs> passing certainly is at a premium here. First putting pressure on. Yeah, here you go. That's what I was talking about right here. You get up behind the guy, you just give him a little nudge, but he makes that mistake, and when he does, you shoot right past him. And sure, it's extremely hard to pass here, but it can be done like a slide job like this. You dive down in the corner after you get momentum, you slide up in front of them, block them, and go on. Now the lapped cars, the slow cars, can become moving chicanes like the 97 here. Watch how the 18 will use the 97 as a pick to hold the 42 back and make that pass. Those are three of the ways to pass here. There's also the bump and dump. Let's leave that one in our <laughs> pocket for a while. Let's hope. We're ready to go 500 laps on one of NASCAR's most demanding tracks, both physically and mentally. We're ready to race. 
Thunder Valley. Get ready for 500 laps of Fox NASCAR coverage from Bristol Motor Speedway. Cars roll out on the first pace lap down on the track apron. Let's have a look at the Geico starting grid for today's race. Carl Edwards, three-time Bristol winner, third Bristol pole. Matt Kenseth, a four-time winner here. Joe Gibbs Toyota's on the front row. Joey Logano, winner of the last two night races here, and Denny Hamlin, fastest in final practice. Kyle Busch, trying to three-peat. He's a five-time Bristol winner, and Jimmy Johnson, who won here in 2010. Kevin Harvick, a Bristol winner in 05, and Martin Truex matches his best career Bristol start. A.J. Allmendinger, last time we were at a short track, he finished second, and Trevor Bain has his best Bristol start. That's your top ten. Hey, let's dial up Kyle Busch, what do you say? Hey, Kyle Bush, it's D.W., buddy. You got a copy? Yeah, D.W., what's up? Hey, man, that, that car of yours has looked awesome all weekend long. You were fast in practice, qualified fifth. What can we expect out of that thing today, buddy? Well, buddy, fine. Have you noticed, and I thought you were taking more notice, though, to the 75th anniversary paint scheme this year. But uh, I think we've got a pretty good hot rod here. It's uh, driven real well around the bottom of the racetrack all practice long. but. As you know, the race will be around the top, so we'll be working for some, some good speed up there, and uh, we'll see if we got to make some changes to it. If we do, the guys will do a great job in the pits, as always, and uh, keep ourselves up front here in position to win. All right, buddy, good luck. Yeah, the car looks great, and uh, take it to the house, man. This is your place. It's your house. You got it, bud. Thanks. We have all four corners of pit road covered today. At Bristol, let's begin with Vince Welch. Well, Mike, here at Bristol, all the speed is up around the top, but pay attention for those drivers that can hold their own on the bottom of the track. Dale Earnhardt Jr. really focused on that this weekend during practice because they feel like if they can hold their own on the bottom and not lose positions when they're down there, once they get up to the top, 
that could pay off. Certainly those positions could come in handy late in the race. Matt Yoakum? Vince, risk versus reward. That's the theme for Joe Gibbs Racing and the other nine teams in my area. In 2016, the norm has been to glue up just four lucks per wheel to save three quarters of a second on a stop. But today, due to the extreme lateral loads here in Thunder Valley, all the teams in my area have glued up five lugs. Doesn't mean you have to use all five, but it gives the crew chief options to save time or play it safe, Jamie Little. Danny Hamlin's crew chief told me the single big biggest challenge today is communication. It's so loud here. He doesn't plan on talking to Denny Hamlin under green flag conditions at all. Instead, listen for the spotters on the roof to keep their drivers informed all race long. Chris Neville? Well, Joe Gibbs Racing has been the team to beat on pit lane this year. And Matt Kenseth's crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, he says this today is all about perfection. Look for these teams to be mistake free because one mistake here on pit lane doesn't just mean a couple positions. It could mean a couple laps. Larry? Chris, 500 laps around this high bank short track and pit road speed, long pit road under caution, 30 miles per hour, the fuel window, 150 to 160 laps, and our grip level of the racetrack on our one to five scale, a three, maybe Mike, she gets rubbered up, a four. And we anticipate that happening with the warm temperatures today and full sunshine, Larry. They are still running the uh, track vac along the pit road on the back straightaway. We have pit road on both the front and the back of the racetrack. 20 cars will pit in the front, 20 in the back. And Mike, we're already seeing some deal making going on <laughs> among the teammates at JGR, uh, not just on the front row here. Let's let's watch and see how this thing plays out. we got Carl Edwards who's moved to the outside. The outside's a preferred line, but then you've got the 20 on the inside. What's the 11 going to do? Is the 11 going to maybe let that 20 car get up in front of him so we have all three of them in line on the outside, the preferred lane? I mean, Jeff, I think that's the deal. I think Carl takes off and the 20 car slides in front of the 11 car. Yeah, and I the think 22 of Joey Logano in that Ford, among those five, he has no friends. Not at all. But I think the bottom can be really, really good here for about a lap and a half or two laps. On new tires, you can hang that bottom. We listened in on Carl Edwards. Hi, bud. You've shown amazing composure this year. We're going to need that today. 500 laps. Hi, right, Jason. Really, really help me, especially if we get out to the lead here. Let me know when guys move up to uh, you know, the very top. Talking to Jason Edleski, his spotter up on the roof. So that was really important information there because the top doesn't really come in until some heat gets in uh, and lays rubber on that very top groove. So you've got to slowly creep up there and still until it really comes in. And it's going to take some other cars to get up there before Carl Edwards and some of these leaders creep up there. Now here's a look at the racetrack. Here is the front straightaway and the back straightaway. Two pit roads at Bristol. Under green, you enter pit road on the side of the racetrack on which you're pitting. But under caution to equalize the competition, everyone enters at turn two, comes all the way around the bottom of the racetrack and exit at turn one, no matter which side of the track you're putting on. That, when you're running the fast laps that we see here and you get into a rhythm and you're so focused, you can really, really mess that up. Trust me, I've done it. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you know? <laughs> What a perfect spring day. Not a cloud in the sky. Chance of rain was zero all weekend. The concrete is 96 degrees, the ambient 72. My, last night I heard I, I heard a Titan running out here. The, the, the jet dryer, I said, what are they doing? There's no rain. I came inside, they were washing the track. They were cleaning the track with the air Titan, and guess what they were using? T-I-D-E. <laughs> It was bubbling up. I said, what are they doing? They said, they're washing the track. We'll ride along with Kyle Busch today. Kevin Harvick's Chevrolet starting seventh. Jamie McMurray rolling off 13th. Pulling right here. He pulled him gloves up. <laughs> they pulled those belts tight. Joey <laughs> Logano right, buddy. We're getting ready to go race. third. And A.J. Allmendinger starting ninth. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., who rolls off 20th, and here we come. Yes, sir, it's Bristol, baby, boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing, boys! Trouble in the front stretch, Dale Jr. doesn't get going. His car won't go. Oh, he stacked up Almirola, Reagan, and Kurt Busch behind him. We are green on the first Come lap. The pit road here if you need to. Carl We're Edwards is gonna lead here. it, Come on down here. and Come Earnhardt is in the pits. And no caution. What the I heck? 
Well, that's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. That I've... goes along with Bristol. That's weird, man, weird. So Edwards got the lead on the break from Kenseth. Logano holds third. Hamlin around the outside of Kyle Busch slots in in fourth. Jimmy Johnson sixth. The deal didn't quite work out for Denny Hamlin. I think he was hoping to get up to third, but Joey Logano had other thoughts and was really aggressive around the bottom. I think they forgot to tell Joey Logano what the plan was. Let's go back to the start. And look at what happened to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, this could have been a this could have been really bad. Wow, it just, right there, it just I mean, he stacks them up because the car won't go. And you see the 43 of Almarola and the 23 of David Reagan. They're just banging into him and nowhere here. to go. Let's listen. A little bit further. Ready, green, green, green. Rolling good, rolling good. It sounds like it's missing cylinders. Like, yeah, no, it's it's what? Like it, it, electronic. no, I think it sounded more like gears. Like, the, like there was something. Yeah, but he there. said there was no power. He's out on track now. He's lost two laps. Sounds fine. No, it's running fine now. It almost sounded like there was something wrong with the gearbox. It was chatter, but then it, you're right. I think it was just popping cylinders. He's yeah. lost two laps and a lot of distance. He's not quite three laps down. The good thing for him is half a lap away is David Reagan from the leader. A caution would give Junior one of those laps back with a free pass. Vince? Well, they told Dale Junior to cycle through the ECU as he came to pit lane. That's what they did. The car fired up and off he went. The electronic control unit, it's a box on the dash. We've started running that. It's, it replaced the ignition boxes when we went rid of electronic fuel ignition. And sometimes you have to reset that box. And that's what's happened. The problem is two laps down. And he, we need a caution before the leader starts lapping anybody else for him to get one of those laps back. Yeah, it's like a computer. Uh, you know, you sometimes yeah, there's a malfunction or a glitch, and you got to reboot it, but that takes time, and unfortunately, uh, it costs them two laps. But these teams are so familiar with these things now. They've been running them for several years. They know exactly what to do, and then didn't lose a lot of time under the circumstances. Yeah, and unfortunately, the timing just could not have been worse. Oh. Yeah, the victims there were David Reagan and Kurt Busch, uh, who were stacked up, couldn't get to the bottom, and went all the way to the back with Junior. Rookies side by side. Chase Elliott in the 24, Ryan Blaney in the 21. I will tell you this, this is going to be fun to watch how aggressive Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be to stay on that lead lap. So watch for him to really push the limits. Jeff, he, he's got to go, and he's two laps down. Looking back from Jamie McMurray at Ryan Blaney as they battle for 14th. It did not take long for everybody to move to the top. Hey, what else? It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long to get lapped either. Eric Almarola got shuffled up there by Ty Dillon. Danica Patrick goes by. Ty Dillon's had a pretty eventful weekend already. Yes. Had trouble in qualifying. I think Almarola was a little loose off the corner, and Dillon tried to take advantage. Well, he, he actually that pressure. Was, yeah, he's underneath the 14 and got really loose underneath him. You can see him side by side here. Looks like maybe the 14 went around him on the outside. The right front of the 43 gets into him and almost turned him around. Wonder how much damage is on that 43 car because he was into the back of Dale Jr. pretty hard when the junior couldn't go. Yeah, you can see right there on the nose, DW, a lot of damage to the front. That could be a, a really affecting the, the cooling and the airflow through that radiator. Remember the 14 had a crash in qualifying, but they have repaired that damage as well as Fourth place. Kyle Busch has tried the low line several times since they dropped the green flag, but he's been unable to advance from fifth. If you're going to make it work, you got to make it work when the tires are fresh. The longer we go and the tires start to wear down a little bit, you automatically are going to have to run a little bit higher. But if you've got good tires on your car and you got new tires particularly, you can work that inside, that bottom. Almirola coming back up to the bumper of Ty Dillon. Danica Patrick right behind. Yeah, we don't know exactly what happened before that incident, but as aggressive as Eric was when he caught back up to 14, I, I'd say he's not real happy about that situation. 
20 laps complete just like that. Carl Edwards has led the ball from the pole. Joey Logano has passed Matt Kenseth. He now challenges Carl Edwards for the lead. Edwards goes to the bottom using Michael McDowell as a pick. Logano comes alongside in the high groove, but that's not going to prevail. Edwards holds on. And I, this is one of the most challenging parts of this racetrack, and that's, this is the challenge I love about Bristol. Lap traffic and that pick and roll we talked about earlier. When you go around the bottom, the grip just isn't there like it is up top like where you see Carl Edwards go to the top where there's rubber laid down. So if you come up on a slower car, you better pick and choose your, your momentum and keep that momentum going if you're going to make that pass because they'll use it against you. you got nowhere to hide and nowhere to rest. Matt? Mike, due to the K&N series rubber on the racetrack, from late yesterday afternoon, Carl Edwards told me he didn't know what to expect for about the first 30 laps. Right now, he's got a mirror full of the 22 of Legato. He's asking his spotter, Jason Ileski, tell me the lines that he's running so that way I can try to do the opposite. And, and Mike, Jeff, I think this is a pretty big day, a start, particularly for that 22 car. They've been qualifying good, but their long-run program has been lacking most of this year. That race last evening was run on bias ply tires. These cars run Goodyear radials. The rubber's different. Bunch of great battles throughout the field. We're seeing the rookies battling it out. It's a gaggle going into three. Oh my goodness. It is wild. Up Got front, it. here comes Logano again on the outside. And there's a slow lapped car on the bottom ahead. The 55, Reed Sorensen. Got him. But Logano Here clears because Edwards wanted to get up there before Matt Kenseth in the 20 came along. This right is on the back of Danica Patrick right here. She's putting up a pretty good fight trying to stay on the lead lap. 
22 is probably a little wee bit better than she is. Going to make a pass here, I think. And this is something I've seen that Joey and Keselowski have really good work down in their cars. They can turn off the top and get a big run down the bottom, and they roll around the bottom really well also. Now the leaders have to get to the bottom because the next slow car, the 30 of Josh Wise, is up on the top of the racetrack. Can't go there. And just ahead of them, banging bumpers are Ty Dillon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kurt Busch and a whole gaggle of cars right there on the left of your screen. Yeah, and now the 22 tried to pass Danica Patrick on the bottom, didn't make it. Carl goes back by on the outside. And this is exactly what happened to Carl Edwards when he was trying to make the pass on Danica and Logano got by him. And now Kenseth coming to second. You, you've got to get up top and get the momentum off the corner and then make that slide job. You cannot spend much time around the bottom or you're going to get past. Dale Jr. has a big slide. Almirola goes past him just in front of the leaders. Down events for our Dale Jr. performance report. Well, when the green flag dropped, Dale Jr. didn't have any power, came to pit road. They recycled the ECU, and they also switched from battery one to battery two. We spoke with a member of the team. They said they're not sure exactly what the problem was. They won't know that until afterwards, and they dig into it. But at this point, it seems like it has been taken care of, and he has full power. Thanks, Vince. Matt Kenseth at that yellow number 20. Hunting the lead on teammate Carl Edwards side by side. Kenseth goes to the front. I mean, to me, this is an example of being a little bit too conservative. You're trying to work the bottom and roll around the bottom, but it's just not going to get it done. You've got to get big momentum and make a big aggressive move and slide up in front of that car in front of you. Yeah, Danica in the 10 car right in front of these guys is running just well enough. And in that top groove that when you go by, try to get on the bottom, go by, you can't quite make it. And she's leaving the bottom open. I believe in the 10, she's doing just what she needs to do. Running oh, yeah. her line, running her race, let the leaders find somewhere else to get by her. Yeah, what you need is to separate yourself from a second and third place cars. Then you could go down there and make the pass. But right now, when you do, you get passed by someone else, just like what happened to Carl Edwards. And you can see that high line off of turn four. It's just not quite developed yet to get that big run. It seems like off of turn two, they get a little bit bigger run, but not quite enough. I think right now, Ken's just saying, I want to protect. I've seen what's happened with Carl Edwards. I've seen what's happened with Joey Logano. Until I get a big run, I'm not going to uh, go to the bottom. So Patrick in the 10 and Josh Wise in the 30 doing a great job running the high line, staying out of the leader's way, and staying on the lead lap. And remember, Danica, this is one, Danica had a great finish here last year. She finished ninth in this race. Right now, she's just fighting to stay on the lead lap. She's doing everything she should be doing. And as far as I'm concerned, Matt's doing what he needs to do. There's no reason for him to make this pass unless he starts getting passed from those on, on the inside. But as you can see here, Logano, he wants to go. Carl wants to go. They all, And then you got Kyle Busch in there as well that wants to get that lead. Yeah, I think it's Logano. I mean, you've got all the Gibbs cars right here racing each other. It's Logano that's pushing the issue. Well, and this goes back to what we talked at the beginning as well, uh, DW, about pressure. You know, do you put a lot of pressure on Danica, force her to make a mistake so you get, get by? But that can also catch you up in it. Yeah, I think you see there, Joey Logano tries that bottle, but they just can't make it up off the corner. I think Joey's car rolls around the bottom better than anybody. Yes, since the drop of the green flag, the two Penske Fords, Logano and Keslowski, have had the best luck in the bottom grove. Yeah. Whoa, oh, one in the wall. Right front, front, I think. I, I think he blew, right there, front there, blew a right front tire, man. That thing shot dead green. right. Yellow's out. Yellow's out. Caution out at lap 52. Kyle Busch running third. Takes a hard hit right, into the turn right two wall. Something. Got the wall. Right side, pretty good. What do we got? Okay, I'm looking at the steering wheel. The steering wheel looks straight. So I don't think it hurt the suspension that much. Winner of the last two Sprint Cup races and runner up yesterday, Kyle Busch. Watch the 18. And, and Mike, think about this. Think about when you run close to the wall, you don't hit it as hard because you don't get all that momentum going up to it. So he was pretty close, bounced off that safer barrier, looked at the steering wheel. I don't think it hurt the car that much. You heard that noise oh, before you heard it hit the wall. They're still green. Yeah, you heard it pop. Oh, yeah, you can see it's down right there. It got a little bit loose right before that, and I wasn't sure if it just he corrected, but, it, it, you know, you could see uh, and hear, just like you guys said, that right front pop. There are six cars one lap down. The first of those, Michael McDowell, gets the free pass. 
Jamie. And Kyle had just told his team we adjusted. It got a little bit tight, but not bad enough to blow a right. Let's go to Vince Welch for pit stops. Martin Truex Jr. in that 78 pitting from six spots as it's loose on the rubber buildup part of the track, but it's not too bad. They're going to put a round in the right ear. Chris Neville. Matt Kenseth saying his car just a little bit too tight in the center. He wasn't able to cut underneath Danica Patrick to get off the corner. We saw a small chassis adjustment there on that right rear, hoping to try and loosen this car up in the center. Jamie. And Denny Hamlin said he's just a little too free to start. He's been adjusting that track bar inside the race car. A wedge adjustment, air pressure, and four tires, Matt. Joey Logano said he was surprised the track maintained the same balance through that entire first run. It was free in. He adjusted with the track bar inside the race car. Air pressure change on the 22 waiting on the left side. Meanwhile, the 19 of Edwards, he was too free on entry. Significant chassis adjustment called for his Toyota. Nice stop by Matt Kenseth. He wins the Advance Auto Parts race off pit road. We have interliners in those right side tires, Mike. That saved that 18 car. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. may get a lap back here by taking the wave around. We'll explain after this. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. And by Bud Light. Raise one to right now. Welcome back to Bristol. Uh, Peyton Mannix made it up to the booth. By the way, you were voted most valuable player in pre-race. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Toss Thank to you. Michael yes. Walter. Quite, quite an honor. Hit him quite right in the numbers. Fantastic. Yeah. I know you've been to the Brickyard. How about Bristol? This has been great. I really have enjoyed it. Uh, got great insight uh, down there uh, from a lot of the drivers. And I'm coming back this fall for a pretty big football game here in great Bristol. Man. So a uh, big sporting event year for uh, Bristol. But uh, it's great to be here. Uh, like I said, I used to watch Jeff Gordon win the Brickyard every other year <laughs> in I Indy. I used to watch uh, you win some races at Indy as well, or some right. uh, games at Indy. But my first time here, and uh, I really had a lot of fun. All right, well, let's turn around and watch some okay, racing. Let's do some racing. We're going back to green. Penalties. Too fast entering the pits, Brad Keselowski. Too fast exiting, Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch. So we restart with the three Gibbs cars up front. Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards, and here comes Martin Truex battling Joey Logano. And Hamlin wants the lead. You better hurry up and get it, because <laughs> if you stay down there very long, you'll get freight trained. 
Yeah, I think you got to take advantage of that bottom groove very early on. If your car's turning good, tires are fresh, that bottom can work really well for you until that top really comes in. And that's what Denny Hamlet's trying to accomplish here. Peyton, with these cars going around the track, like this, just anything about this reminds you of football? Well, obviously, the. Uh the pre stuff is a lot different, uh, Daryl. Uh, you know, as a football, if you're talking to anybody before the game, that means you're not focused. That means you're not serious. Here, uh, there's a lot of action going on before the race, which to me has to be the challenge for the driver to get focused, right? Um, uh, amidst all of the uh, requests on each driver to get focused, to get ready to go out and perform and compete, to me, that's what's pretty impressive to witness. Yeah, I always thought it was amazing the amount of distractions that the drivers have to, you know, be put right. in, in front of in NASCAR versus other sports. Right, yeah, there's, there's no doubt that's a huge difference. And then go out there and in, do what they're doing right now. Right. <laughs> well, it's an intramural game right now. Three of the Gibbs Toyotas out front. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to overcome ignition problems at the start of the race. And in this sport, we get to listen in. I'm not sure if the battery one came disconnected, and we're running on two now. Yeah, it was good until we went to green, you know, went for it. I, I had power warming up the tires and all that stuff all the way up until we went full throttle. We're, we're not going to change off of one and two. We're going to stay on one and two. Well, that was one of the challenges yeah. that he's already had. But I'll tell you another challenge that he has right now is that he's got much older tires as he makes contact. Oh, Whoa. Trying to get by a slower car, uh, Michael Annette. Clint Boyer cut him some slack right there because he, uh, he let Dale Jr. slide. I think he might have a little bit of damage, or Annette does. But, you know, he knows he's got to go. He knows those leaders on fresher tires are going to be coming in a hurry. Yeah, now, that, was, also, that was for position. They're both one lap down because Dale Jr. did not pit when everyone else came in for fuel and tires. He stayed out behind the pace car, so on one to go, he could take the wave around and get one of his two laps back. Well, that makes sense. Right ahead of him is a 23 of David Reagan. He's got to get by him, too, before the leaders get to them. Yeah, and really, they had no choice. They, there's nobody else, you know, except for maybe Annette, on their lap. And so they're not going to get the wave around as long as there's cars that are one lap down. And so they've got to take this kind of chance and hope the caution comes out before those leaders get he to He just them. got in the wall really hard in three and four. And I think he got a little damage when he was racing with Annette. And now the car is kind of pushing up the hill, it looks like. So David Reagan is the car in the free pass position as we watch this battle for six. Trouble, Whoa. turn two. Ricky Stenhouse goes around. The caution is out. And the free pass will go to... David Reagan missed it by one. Mike, I went over last night. There's a patch off in a off a of turn two over there. That's a little bit different con, uh, con to, uh, te texture than the rest of the racetrack. And when you hit it, it's slick and it can cause you to get loose. I think that's what happened to Stenhouse. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely out there. Is that the way you saw it? I saw it. I saw it. I was out there kind of scouting last night. Well, I saw it there. Watch uh, 34 the of Chris. Oh, he got no, loose pretty just, early there, DW. Yep. Yeah, he it, didn't get to the patch. To me, it looked like he came out of the brakes and really let the car roll and his car, he likes to run his car loose and it just came around right there. Chris Buescher got a little damage in that one, uh, trying to avoid Ricky Stenhouse. Well, we talked about picks and blocks and picks and rolls. And <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty minor right there. That's cosmetic damage right there. Okay, Here's a look back uh, you at gotta, three race. You, you gotta explain that one. Yeah. Tell us, well, what was it like throwing to Michael Waltrip? I mean, not a lot of speed there. I've thrown to a lot faster guys uh, in my career, I have to admit. But a uh, big target, big target, yeah, pretty yeah. easy to complete. I got so. it wide open. That's right. Yeah, That's I right. got to admit, it must have been a perfect pass because I was shocked he caught it. <laughs> we've, 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 seen him, we've seen him dance. He's built for comfort. I understand. I understand. We've seen him drop the ball a couple times, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. I'm sure you've had offers. Have you ever wanted to climb behind the wheel of one of these? Well, uh, I have had offers. Uh, so many things uh, I know Jeff can relate that I've had to say no to <laughs> as a uh, as a football player. Sure. Now that I'm not playing, a couple of things that I do kind of want to uh, check off, maybe the bucket list. And so uh, you never know. Um, I brought a good teammate, uh, old friend uh, Brandon Stoker today. I let him drive the pace car. I let him ride in the pace car today. So I passed on that opportunity, but maybe something down the road. I look forward to doing it. Have you watched enough of this action to know who your <laughs> number one draft pack, uh, pick would be? Well, I got to go with Earnhardt. 
Obviously, uh, uh, he and I are on the same team now, right? I don't have a team anymore. I'm on the nationwide team, so okay. I'm going with Dale. Uh, you know, tough start today, but hey, um, well, I pull for him. I pull, it's yeah. a long race, so you know, I pull for him. But I have great respect for all these guys. You know, I've known Jeff for a long time, and, and big Sterling uh, Marlin. Sterling, fan Sterling's an old well. Tennessee guy. Yeah. 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 You didn't happen to bring a chicken parm with you, did you? <laughs> you know, I don't it's, need it. It's, uh, yeah, it's in the car. It's in the car. <laughs> What's, what do you think it'll be like when they put 165,000 people in here for college football game? I, I think it'll be awesome. I mean, this is a great sports town, obviously a great venue. This looks like a football stadium it to does. me. I mean, this yeah. looks different than other, uh, you know, looks different than the Brickyard. So, and it's a natural fit for Tennessee and Virginia Tech to be playing. It's a great rivalry. Uh, uh, you know, it's a great recruiting battle. And uh, I'm looking forward to coming to the game. You know, I got a little more free time the fall so uh, right. I'm planning on being here I'm planning on being here we're all looking forward to it thanks for joining us hey, enjoy the rest yeah. of the race thanks for be having careful me guys. being up here in the booth it's contagious I understand I will <laughs> I will thanks good to be with you guys Peyton Thank Manning you. let's turn back to this caution Matt Kenseth is your race leader at 73 laps cars have made pit stops under caution they're still working on the right rear of Kyle, uh, right front of Kyle Bush's car and a correction on the free pass we're being told that uh, Cole Witt was the first driver one lap down. But Dale Jr. Rather than Dale Reagan, uh, David Reagan. But Dale Jr., you know, that, that was a great gamble yeah. that they played right there. You know, they uh, they took the wave around, so they get one of those laps back. Oh, yeah. It, uh, having trouble early like that, Jeff, as you well know, you've got a long time to get all those laps back and get back in this thing. It's not over by any means. Now we've had three speeding penalties already, including the Penske team. Matt? Mike, Brad Keselowski was busted in the first zone entering off turn two. Now to help lessen the percentages of mistakes due to changes of timing lines and also the painted lines and markers on pit road, T. Penske and other major teams, they'll walk pit road race morning and they'll measure between timing line to timing line. That way it marries up to what the map they are given by NASCAR and it's all that small attention to detail that can really decide whether you have a successful day or a frustrating one. Just too many pit road, pit road speeding penalties for this car. Yeah, there is something not going they're right They're pushing there. the limits too tight. You yep. know, the, the, the variance is just too tight. For this year for him. Jamie. Well, I took a look at the Kyle Busch uh, right front tire that came off, and Goodyear was there. They said their initial thought is it was a melted bead. There's actually a temperature gauge on the tire, on the wheel itself. It was 420 degrees. They said that's really hot. They're taking a look at it now, and they did note these right side tires have inner liners, and the inner liner did its job, and it stayed inflated for Kyle. And right now, he says his car feels just fine. I find that so interesting because yesterday in the Xfinity race, he talked about how hard you had to pound the car into the banking, and he thought that Kyle Larson, who he was battling against yesterday, was going to blow right front or, or heat up the beat, and then here it happens to him today. Now, he's still on the lead lap. Let's have a look at today's Ford Performance Track Facts. Ford has won three of the last four cup races here at Bristol. Team Penske has won at Bristol in four of the last five seasons. First Ford in the race is Joey Logano in fifth right now. Trevor Bain also in the top ten. And we listened in on Jimmy Johnson. Ron said that they told him that you were point oh six over that first pit stop. So less than a mile per hour. So you're pretty close. Ten point. And that's good information. You got to know that. How much was over? Where was I over? And, how, you know, I got to avoid that. Yeah, it just goes to show yep. you the teams, how they're pushing the limits everywhere they possibly can, not just on the track, but down pit road as well. And uh, I want to point out, look who's in the top five here. A.J. Allmendinger out there on the outside. He'll probably have a good chance to get by these guys on the outside as well. Green flag. Matt Kenseth from the outside front row powers into the lead, followed by Martin Truex. Hamlin slips up to third. Not a slip up. He just drove up there. Well, and I, here comes AJ. I tell you, these uh, Gibbs boys got these restarts. They got them orchestrated out pretty good here so far. Yeah, you have a few laps after green, mainly on new tires that you can roll around the bottom like we see Carl Edwards trying to do. And you can make some passes, but after that, 
If you don't get up top, <laughs> you are going to get freight trains. Don't stay down there too long or you're going to be in the boat closet right here. Everybody and his brother is going by you. And when you're on the outside, you're going to be super aggressive to get to the outside of that car to make sure you get that spot. Every spot is so hard to get here. Like my spotter always said, inside and he's got friends. He's going to have to get up right here ahead of the 42. No, no he no didn't room. do it. He didn't do it. Chris Neville. Well, Mike, talking to Kevin Harvick's crew chief, Rodney Childers, this morning, he was pretty happy that Kevin ran the Xfinity race yesterday because Kevin said there was so much rubber that was laid down the groove. The track changed a lot more than they thought, so they made some adjustments going into this race. Kevin right now saying that car has been a little bit difficult to commit to the throttle off the corner, a little bit loose on exit. And, Mike, that was my point about that patch off of turn two over there. I looked at that last night, and it had rubber built up like little knots of rubber off of turn two, made it very treacherous. As Chris made that report, Carl Edwards lost five spots before he could finally get up in line in eighth place. Matt? Mike, on Saturday, Carl Edwards spent the day during the Xfinity race up on top with his spotter, Jason Hedleski. He had been several years. He wanted to go up top to get a different perspective for today, knowing just the difference between running on the bottom and up top. Right now, his biggest issue when he's on the bottom of the car is just way too free. Joey Logano, seventh, Edwards, eighth. Now, right now, Bernhardt is in the free pass position, 35th, first car a lap down, along with Stenhouse, Boyer, Reagan, Annette, and Sorensen. And he also has a pretty good gap of cars, or, or number of cars between him and the leader. So he's in a pretty good position right here, I believe, to get his lap back. Yeah, no, he's right behind Kyle Busch, and Kyle is slicing and dicing getting by these cars, trying to get back to the front. But, you know, if, I, if I'm the 18 team, I'm a little bit concerned here. I mean, what caused that bead to, to blow? It's not going to fix itself unless he didn't have the front fans on, and now he turned them on. That will cool that down a little bit more. It looked like a camber issue to me. That inside of the tire was a, kind of the sidewall was torn up. It looked like a lot, but, lot but too again, much camber. But, again, they're not going to fix that. How about Kyle Larson? Started this race 25th. And here he is racing for a spot in the top five. Oh, he's going to be somebody to deal with. We know that. We saw that. Race. If you watched that race yesterday, he loves riding up next to that wall. He loves it so much, he'll get up there and kiss it every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Chris? Mike, talking to Kyle Larson's crew chief, Chad Johnson, he said, boy, yesterday we didn't think we had a very good car until the last 20 minutes of practice. Once the rubber got down in that upper groove, the 42 car started to come to life, and we're seeing that in the race right now. Sure are. Matt Kenseth, your leader. Martin Truex, Denny Hamlin in Toyotas, then Harvick and Allmendinger Chevys. You're watching Fox NASCAR.
100 laps completed. Bristol, the fastest lap of the race. Martin Truex Jr. on lap 81. Switch to Sprint for a limited time. Save 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile rates. Sprint, better for less. Matt, Matt Kenseth, your leader over Martin Truex, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick. And we had this battle between Joey Logano and A.J. Allmendinger. Currently seventh and eighth. Kyle Larson right in the midst of it. Yeah, they're all a little bit faster than A.J. Allmendinger. Uh, but getting by him <laughs> is a little bit different thing. But Joey Logano wanted to get by the 42, made a little contact. Speaking of contact, Casey Kane and Jamie McMurray racing for 13th with Chase Elliott. And see, that's what I would consider a missed slide job. Nah. When you just don't commit enough and get up in front of that car, they can get to the outside of you and it gets you really loose. I call that casual contact. That's <laughs> kind of Bristol at its best right there. You, you're going to rub into people. You're going to hit people. You can't help it at the speed we're going. And the, and the track is so tight. Now keep note of the 98. That's Cole Witt. He is the first car one lap down right now. Joey Logano so battling Logano Kyle gonna, Larson. That's, that's a classic slide job right there. Yep. I think that 98 held up the 42. The 22 got a big run off of turn two and made that big slide and got up in front of him. Well, we got these guys right here. That Casey Kane's going after McMurray in that one car. They have made some contact. You got the rookie in there looking this all over. And remember, Kurt Busch got held up in the Earnhardt jam on the opening green flag, got way back trying to battle now. And to I, regain a lot of lost ground, he's 16. And I think Casey Kane has a really good race car right now, and the one's holding him up slightly. Joey Logano's headed for pit road. Matt. Mike, four laps ago, Joey Logano reported a possible issue with the right front. He's picking up a vibration. A lap ago, he says it has gotten worse. It feels like something is coming apart. He's now on pit road. The guys are on the wall. He was six. He's going to lose two to three laps with this stop. Let me tell you, this is no place to play around with lug nuts, in my opinion. You better put five on the loads you carry here and the speeds, the banking. Don't put four lug nuts on that right side tire. Danica Patrick now the first car one lap down. Kevin Harvick hunting the leaders. He's gotten up to third, breaking that Toyota stranglehold on the front five. Yeah, our leader just got held up pretty good there by uh, Clint Boyer in the 15, and that allowed 78 of Martin Trix to close right up on the back of our leader. Uncontrolled tire violation uh, for Joey Logano. He will have to come down pit road at 30 miles an hour, a pass-through penalty. Here's a look at it. I'm telling you, there's, there's just something about Bristol that brings out the intensity and just makes it oh. so much harder to manage all yep. the things that you're going through. The man behind the pit wall right there should have caught that tire. Instead, it bounced off the wall. That's OK. When it bounces out of the pit stall and out of control, that's the violation. The 2 and the 22 have entirely too many pit road violations. I mean, every week, one and sometimes both of them have something happen on pit road. Yeah, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm just I'm pointing but, out but the if, obvious. If there's any place you can't have that happen, that you have to be a little more conservative and do everything perfectly, it's under green at Bristol because now they're two laps down. Second place. Yeah, Harvick's been really putting some good laps together and working traffic really, really well. Turex looking low on Brian Scott. Regan Smith ahead. Spin, turn two. Kyle, Kyle Busch Bush again. Down, down, Round down, again. Down. I don't think he hit anything. Caution waves for the third time today. I don't look no, good. 34 just about bailed in the corner there, picked our rear wheels up. Oh. Yeah, wow. I, I, I know he didn't hit the wall, and I don't know if something hit him or not. Someone just might be that. Chris Busher in the 34 coming. Well, Sorry, there's a lot of cars to check in front. Up. Yeah, you got to check up right here. Yeah, 41 they stacked his brother, out the 34. <laughs> and they just pile drafted him. The 34 of Chris Busher just came in there with a bunch of speed. It's a domino effect when that first car checks up. We see this happen quite often here at Bristol. Woo, missed the end of that pit wall, no. barely. I'm not really sure what caused. I don't know if the five came up on the 21 and had to check up earlier before they came off a of turn four. What caused that whole line to slow down? But obviously, when it got back to the 34, he just couldn't slow. Yeah, there you go. The, the 21 kind of slid up in front of those guys. Vince, pit stops. 
Martin Truex Jr. coming to pit road. Truex pitting from the second position. You know, they fought loose throughout the course of the weekend, and he says it's loose again, especially into turn one. Chassis adjustment on both sides. Chris? And Matt Kenseth saying that the car was a little bit tight in the center of that first run. Much better this run. He did say that the car a little bit too free to get going. Said once the air pressure came up, the car felt good. Jamie? Denny said his car got too tight on throttle that time, so they want to be conservative. Another wedge adjustment, air pressure, and four tires for the 11, Matt. Almondinger in the 47, a great run so far. The car is just tight when it lands on entry to the corner and just gets tighter on exit. Looking for an air pressure change on that. Meanwhile, you can see a chassis adjustment already completed on the 19 of Carl Edwards. He needed more help, especially through the center of the corner. Matt Kenseth again, first off pit road. Paul Menard with a two tire change, gambles and picks up nine positions. 118 laps complete, third caution of the day at Bristol. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new road. A number of cars, seven of them took the wave around on this caution. That will put Dale Earnhardt Jr. back on the lead lap, although with worn tires. Larry points out Paul Menard, who will start second, made a two-tire change, same as his teammate Ryan Newman did on an earlier caution, and maintained did not give up a lot of ground despite only two fresh tires. You know, the only thing I'd be concerned with, though, is you're starting on the inside lane, and that outside lane is preferred. If you start in the outside lane, you can get away with this. So he's going to have to get up really fast, and he already didn't get a good start. Yeah, you know, the guy that really hated that is Kevin Harvick right behind him. He couldn't go because Menard couldn't go. Now, see, Menard needs to get up right there. If he can get up in close front it, of the six, it. and he does. Go, and he does. And how about Trevor Bain? In sixth place, highest running Ford in this race. The Knoxville, Tennessee native having a great day in the early going here. Mike, I was so impressed with the run they had last week at Texas. I know they didn't get a great finish, but man, they stayed out. He led 12 laps, 12 laps, the most laps he's led in a race. That's right. When he won the Daytona 500, he led <laughs> one, one. one lap. That's right. Hey, you only have to lead one. That's, That's the right counts. I just love what they did last week. I thought it was really cool. Well, it made it fun to, to talk about. Martin Truex Jr. is back at 10th place, result of a kind of slow pit stop because they hit the rear tire twice to make sure all the lugs were tight on the right rear. Look how the gas man was having a hard time adjusting the left rear adjustment. Then they were having some difficulty in the right rear adjustment. He had to hit the lugs again on the right rear. I mean, that was... Uh, that was a very <laughs> unorchestrated. <laughs> well, it did not go as planned. 15 and a half second stop. Oh, Trevor Bain got Man, a bump he got there a boot from, from Kurt, Kurt Busch. Woo. But I applaud the tire changer. Instead of gambling and saying, oh, it might be all right, he went back and made sure they were all tight. It, this reminds me of driving down the interstate, and I'd say, okay, I'm getting this lane. No, wait a minute, I'm getting that lane. No, wait a minute, I can't get in that lane. This is crazy. 
George Carlin said it best. Everybody on the freeway driving slower than you is a moron, and everybody who passes you is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but he would love Bristol. Yes, oh, yeah. he would love would Bristol. Have. Keep him busy here. <laughs> Denny Hamlin underneath Trevor Bain for position. I think Bain was feeling some pressure from Kevin Harvick. We Whoa. talk about putting pressure. Kevin, nobody does it better than Kevin. And he got loose and lost that spot. Seventh at stake here. I, I tell you, Kurt Busch in F41, he is all over the back of Ryan Blaney. And the pressure is getting to Blaney because he's gotten sideways off turn two a couple of times here. It, it, if aggressiveness is the way to pass, then that's why Kurt Busch makes a lot of passes. You don't think it has anything to do with that yellow bumper, do you? I mean, well, you know, these guys no. have a, these veterans have a tendency to go after those no. rookies. I, if I were him, I'd still be mad from getting stacked up on the first lap when Dale Earnhardt's <laughs> car would not go. That's true. You gotta let it go, man. You gotta let it go. He's trying to let it go forward. <laughs> <laughs> Hamlin and Bain keep fighting for seventh place. Yeah, we've talked about how Denny Hamlin does have a car that can roll through the bottom or the or the middle, hey, as you saw right there. But, but you only have look at oh he gets Ooh. up and gets into the side of him, yeah. but you only have a, a small window of opportunity before you're going to have to get up in front of that car. But guys, think about this. Up until a couple of weeks ago, when's the last time we had a chance to talk about Trevor Bain running in the top 10, leading laps, sitting here with a pretty darn good race car today? Yeah, it's a great job by him, him especially as much as he loves this place. Yep. Tennessee boy lives right down the road. Let's go back to the caution, third one of the day. Now, you now see watch the, the five check up. Yeah, he got wide, and I think he got some loose rubber on his tires. And now he's concerned of what's going to happen going into one. He checks up a little early, and it just was a domino effect back to the 18 and the 34 where they made contact, and the two, and maybe even a little bit with the 48. Yeah, contact. Brad Keselowski got a good bit of front end damage from that one as they accordion together. I, I tell you what. <laughs> Blaney's going to have to come in and get his uh, yellow tape replaced on his rear bumper because <laughs> it's all stuck to the front of that 41 car right now. Man, he is all over him. This is what you want to do, though. 41 car of Kurt Busch knows that that's a rookie. If he looks in his mirror enough, I'm going to get by him. Well, and if I'm Kurt Busch, I'm looking at the gap between the 21 car of Ryan Blaney and Jamie McMurray. If there's a gap, then, then I'm going to push you harder and harder. If there's no gap, that means you're not holding me up. If there's a gap, that means you're holding me up. Well, here goes Bain. He's going to go after the 27. Remember, Menard took only two tires. Bain trying to take advantage. The 11 a, up high covers the spot. Yeah, he's got to just be a little bit more aggressive, I think, there. I'm not sure getting down there underneath the 27 is going to pay off. No. It could be, uh, he could lose a lot of spots here. Somebody had to do it. Yeah, but don't let it be me. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's the thing, you've got to, it, it takes lap after lap to set this up. As we see yeah. uh, Hamlin get loose there, he was really trying to get aggressive back to the throttle, not only to complete the pass on the six, but to try to get a run on the 27. And what's frustrating about this, look, he had all the way up to the side of the 11, but couldn't get in. Ah, he got in a hole. They found him a break, gave him a break. 140 laps complete, four-time Bristol winner Matt Kenson out front.
Caution is out for the fourth time, coming off turn number two. A lot of smoke from the rear end of Kyle Larson's car. He got against the wall in the back straightaway, and we're under caution again. Yeah, Mike, it looks like it's a gear. Um, Jeff and I thought it might be a hub, might be an, I don't know, but there's something in the rear end for sure. Guys, we're looking at our eagle side of it, and it looks like to me maybe the track bar broke on that 42 car. Whoa. The rear end is way over to one side. Whoa, now. Yeah, so maybe that's tire smoke that we're seeing, and he knows there's something major wrong in the back. This place will do that. You put a lot of pressure on that. Uh, Look right there, guys. Look how far the rear end, how far it, the yeah, body is over to moving. the right. Yeah, you can really see it moving back and forth. You nailed it, Larry. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, and you can see the left rear sticking out. Not many cars will take pit stops. Paul Menard, who got two tires last time around, is in. And drivers took the wave around on the last caution, made out really well on this one, including Dale Jr. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. By Nationwide, Nationwide is on your side. And by Cialis. Chevy Silverado built with high strength steel for high strength dependability. Silverado, an official vehicle of NASCAR. We're under caution for Kyle Larson. We'll hear from him in a moment. Trevor Bain was following the 27 of Paul Menard. Is he going to pit or isn't he? There is Bain. There's Menard just ahead of him. Menard comes to the pit lane. Bain faints, stays out, but he goes over that orange box, which at Bristol takes the place of the orange cone commitment line violation. That's terrible. Now, you cannot put your left side tires anywhere over that orange box, or it's a pit road violation, uh, commitment line violation, just like we saw there. So unfortunate for them. But they do have a good race car. You just got to be really smart now the rest of the race. Well, that's the whole thing. Now you're back in traffic and uh, you just you, you not, don't want to make it worse. Teammates, Kenseth and Edwards on point for the restart. 
two Chevys, Harvick and Allmendinger, in row two. Toyotas, Hamlin and Truex, in row three. Then the rookies, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, in row four. McMurray and Newman, the top ten. Brian Scott got the free pass. 28 cars on the lead lap. We're back under green. A.J. Allmendinger doing a great job hanging in there and getting uh, that outside lane on the restart the last couple of times. And now he's being real aggressive to take advantage of it. Just remember, Allmendinger ran second over at Martinsville two or three weeks ago here. And that team has really, really come alive. They've been doing a great job. Ernie Crowe came over there, crew chief. Everybody's working hard right now, and he got him up front. Boy, Jimmy Johnson moved Austin Dillon, stuck in the middle three wide, and they sort it out. I do not want to be caught in the middle here. No. Matter of fact, I don't even know how they got a middle here. They didn't used to have one. <laughs> Here's Jamie. Well, Kyle Larson was just going to talk to us, but he was just called back to his car, but he told me a track bar mount broke. So that had the track bar dangling, and he also said it affected the rear end of the car. So he thought he was going to be done for the day. They think they've got it fixed. He was running top three. He hopes to get back out. Wow. If the bracket itself, which is welded to the frame and everything, maybe. Larry, can you explain what's going on with that deal? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use our Ford cutaway car. And remember, the track bar is in the rear of the car, and it actually what holds the rear end to the left and the right. It's a tuning to as well. We hear him talking about adjusting it, but it's in the rear of the car. It hooks to the frame over here, and over here it hooks to the trailing arm. Right here is where that track bar mount broke. They had to replace that trailing arm or possibly that bracket so that if it had broke over here on the frame, that would have been major. But I will say this, the Ganassi Chevrolet drivers have a history, not a driver problem, of breaking track bar mounts. They both did it at Dover a couple years ago. And with the loads that you pull here, these things are loaded up so hard in the turn, it just puts that much more pressure on that track bar. When all these teams are trying to build short track cars to make them as light as possible for these shorter uh, distances and tracks, because that's where the speed's gonna come. It's not about aerodynamics here, it's about weight. And so even though the overall weight has to be the, the same for everybody, you can still get more lead and, and bias down in the, the rails. And so you can make your car faster Faster by lightening some of these components up, but that's where it bites you. Yeah, we just we just never went down that road. We've made it stronger, not lighter. Martin Truex makes his way up to fourth past Harvick. How about Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch? Remember, Kurt got caught up in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s mishap on the start. Kyle Busch has overcome uh, a tire problem and multiple pit stops to run in 11th. Jamie. Well, I think Kyle Busch wins the award for passing the most cars today, and it's basically been the balance his car when he had the last issue we heard them blame the 34 but Kyle came on the radio and said guys I am a 10 tight so he was blaming his car in the handling at the moment yeah Jamie I, I'm not I wouldn't be a little bit surprised if it maybe they didn't knock the toe out when he hit the wall with that tire going down maybe change that toe a little bit and they had to adjust the car to the toe now remember few of the leaders stopped for tires under this last caution Kurt Busch the 41 I believe is the first car on track with fresh tires as he battles his brothers side by side. And Kyle Busch took four tires that last caution as well. Those 11 drivers that stayed out, they had 26 laps on their tires. Guy that's been running really well, moving up through the field and up there right on the back of the 78 car, Martin Drex Jr., Kevin Harvick. Got a fast car, boys. Yeah, his car's looking really good. Look how it cuts the middle and he can really get back in the gas. He gets that little bit of a run downhill. Watch, he'll come here, then he'll run that thing down the hill a little bit, get a little extra momentum down that straightaway. You can see the back of the 78 car just step out ever so slightly on the exit, just causing him to, to not be able to get wide open, and that's where Harvick really gains on him. Just ahead of them, A.J. Allmendinger having another great run in third. Matt? Mike, the 47 team definitely heading in the right direction. A second of Martinsville trying to improve on that here today.
Harvick's just been putting a tremendous amount of pressure on that 78 car, forcing him to make a mistake or maybe letting him go, just like he did there. He finally put so much pressure on him that Truex said, okay, you're faster <laughs> than me, go ahead. Here, here Dal Kyle Busch not only passed his brother, but Casey Kane, Ryan Newman, and just passes Ryan Blaney. He is on a march to the front. Always felt like if no one's in front of me and somebody is beating my rear bumper off, let that guy go. Yeah, that's just smart racing. You know, you got to get 500 laps here at Bristol. You're not going to do it if you're just aggressive every single lap. Exactly. What do you say? I'll see you a little later. <laughs> yeah, we're only one third distance. Plenty of time for paybacks. Fox NASCAR, sponsored by Coors Light. Whatever your mountain, climb on. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. 184 laps complete. Matt Kenseth, Carl Edwards have been fighting for the lead in race traffic. Edwards trying to use the 44 of Brian Scott as a pick and battle his teammate for the lead. Yeah, all these cars that are trying to stay on the lead lap or stay on one lap down. They've got a battle. You know, they've got to push hard up in that outside groove and force them. Oh, as we see Matt Kenseth in the wall, I think he blew a right front. It sure did look Just like, like it. that 18 car. Sure did look like it. Caution flies right, for, for the fifth right. time. Man, this guy just has not been able to catch a break this year. But but trust it, look, when the 18 hit the wall, he didn't hit it that I mean, I know it hit it hard, but it didn't yeah. hurt it bad. Yeah, and I don't one. think they got that big a deal here. They put the tire back on. I think he's going to be OK. Now, while we were away, Chase Elliott had a vibration, perhaps a loose wheel. He made a pit stop and went a lap down. Chase Elliott went two laps down. And here's a look. Watch the 20. 
Yeah, it blew pretty yeah. early as he. And, but see how close it, you're one. so. It's always. I always think Richard Petty always said, uh, "I run close to the wall because if something happens, I don't hit it that hard." He's are here are, are two. He and the 18 are two perfect examples of what he was talking about. You can almost see that right front drop down right before it hits the wall, and that's usually a pretty good indication that it blew a right front. Tire. That inner liner is saving these guys. Oh, it, it the is. inner liner is definitely helping it from being more damaged. Kyle Larson has come back in the race after that sway bar repair, 37 laps down. So all 40 cars are running. Pit road is open, Vince. Martin Truex Jr. coming to pit road. He says he's fighting the same thing throughout the course of the day. Just needs a little bit more center turn and the rubber up in one and two really giving his car a loose in feel. Remember they had a real slow pit stop last time around, lost five spots. They're going to try to help him here with air pressure. Chris? Kevin Harvick very happy with his race car. He said, if anything, I'd just like to turn a little bit better in the center, but his problem early in this race was getting off the corner much better now. Jamie? Kyle Busch taking note of another teammate with a tire issue. He said, guys, what's going on? And they're worried they're going to run out of tires today. If they wanted to come and get some four-tire stop for Kyle Busch, Matt. Too tight this run for A.J. Allmendinger in the 47. An air pressure adjustment expected. Meanwhile, veterans Clay Robinson and Kip Wolfmeyer going to work the changers on Carl Edwards' team. His car was tighter that run. He also had a vibration, but he stayed out the last time. It didn't get any worse, and he's away. Paul Menard is the first off pit road. Carl Edwards, Martin Truex in the Advanced Auto Parts race off. Again, two tires for Menard. Lug nuts, count them up, folks. One, two, three, four. Four on the left, some five on the right. More after this. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. 192 laps. Joe Gibbs Racing has been unstoppable until they came to Bristol. Look at the front end of Denny Hamlin's car. One of three Gibbs cars to have problems in the last three laps. That was damaged earlier in practice. He ran into the 44 on pit road. They've had to pull that front end nose piece away and leave the bead blowing hose just hanging up on in the air. You oh, and Kyle Busch, right here. too fast exiting pit road. Restarts right tail end of the longest line. There's that contact. We're going back to green with Carl Edwards, the pole sitter, the only Gibbs car that has not had issues as he battles Paul Menard, who took just two tires again on this stop. 
again. Uh, Carl Edwards is going to work really hard on that bottom. His, he's got newer tires, rolls good around the bottom. He knows that 27 has two tires. He's going to work this extremely hard to get that track position. He better get going because the guy that's got a really fast car is that blue car, number four, and he's going to be all over. Oh, he might have him if he can get up. He needs to get up. Yeah, don't wait, man. There he goes. He got it. Good job. Harvick holds the top. Here comes Truex on the bottom. Harvick looking to get underneath the 27. No room to do it. Truex is there. And don't look now, but uh, look who's coming into the <laughs> yeah, picture. Jimmy Johnson has showed up all of a sudden. Johnson has overcome a speeding penalty as well. Oh, and there's that little rookie in there, too. And guess who he's got with him? His buddy, 41 car, pushing him to the front. Boy, Truex really wiggled getting into turn one. And Harvick holds the spot. Yeah, Truex, Truex saw the 19 of Carl Edwards work that bottom so well and make that pass. And he was pushing hard to do the same, and he got loose. But you know what I like about Blaney? I mean, even though Kurt Busch has been wearing him out, he has not panicked. Boy, they were just there eating up is. that 27. The 27 just needs laps. Um, you know, as those new tires fade or kind of level out, then that those two tires will be fine up top. He'll be fine, but they're going to all try to take advantage of that while they can. I was going to say, what he needs is left side tires, but <laughs> I he really, might hang on there for I a I really bit. like the way Kevin Harvick passed him. To me, that's that's how you get it done. You go in there side by side, and you roll through the middle and just shoot up in front of them about three-quarters of the way through the corner and just cut off their path. How about Almondinger? He keeps working the bottom, trying to work his way forward, but that elevator doesn't always go up. Well, Fourth he's place. been very lucky to start on the outside on all these restarts until then, and now it's not you know paying off for him. But here's Jimmy Johnson going to go after the 27 as well. I tell you what, I like what I'm seeing, like the 18 and the 20. Even though they both had trouble, they are still running like nothing's wrong with their car. It hadn't it hadn't damaged their car to where they can't continue on it the, and be competitive. The 48's got to be real careful here. He didn't make that pass. And if you don't make that pass, you cannot stay on that bottom groove for very long or you're going to get shuffled. Casey and he's going to get back in line here. Casey can't let him in. That's a teammate. Yep. He'll drop into seventh. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back on the lead lap and up to 11th. Here's our nationwide Dale Jr. performance update. Vince. Well, the good news is for Junior, the car has been pretty solid throughout the course of the day. Of course, they had that problem at the drop of the green flag, fell a couple of laps down, but they have fought back. They are on the lead lap, and crew chief Greg Ives says top 15 is next, then top 10, then top 5, then we're going to go for the win. Not bad for a car that spent the first 52 laps of this race two laps down and the next 64 laps, one lap down. Watch this 21 car, Mike. I, I mean, this kid is doing a, I know we got a long way to go, but Ryan Blaney is driving the wheels off that 21 Classic car Classic right slide now. job right here. Oh. Look at him dive down to the bottom and just slide up in front of him. That's up in perfect. the fourth place and moving on. Great job, rookie. Yeah, baby. That looked like hey, a man, veteran move. Where did his buddy go? He left him in the dust. Well, he had a problem. <laughs> Tire trouble. Yeah, he had to come in and fix a loose wheel. Here's the 41 now, Kurt Busch going after the 27. Those two tires just don't seem to be working. Whoa, here right comes now. Jimmy. <laughs> and he cost Jimmy a few positions, so you know Jimmy's going to use them up right here if he can. Two tires aren't working real good, but my bumper's still intact. <laughs> Vince? This might be a good sign for those rooting for Jimmy Johnson. The last two pit stops, Chad Canals has made zero changes to that car. Gives you an indication of how good the 48's working, and he's moving forward. Remember, had a speeding penalty and lost a lot of ground earlier. Yeah, you know, he has loved his car. I remember the first laps in practice, he came on the radio. He wasn't the fastest, but he told Chad Canals, I like the way my car feels. Feel is so important here. Carl Edwards, your pole sitter, is the leader, but now he's about to get into race traffic again. That may allow that blue number four of Kevin Harvick to close right in. Eight tenths of a second is the distance right now. All the lap cars so far staying up high and out of Edwards' way. Let's update Matt Kenseth, who led 142 laps of this race. Chris? Mike, I took a look at the right front that came off that car. The wheel temp only about 300 degrees, so not that hot. But it was interesting because there was 
tread separation right at the shoulder of the tire. And Matt Kenseth is saying he just turned into the corner, the tire just gave way right into the wall. His crew chief, Jason Rackliff, said the team really looked at the suspension at that right front corner, said everything looks good with that car. So Matt Kenseth running hard now. He is, he's coming back, but boy, a lap ago, Keselowski just side slammed uh, the six of Trevor Bain. You know, Bill Goldberg, the uh, the wrestler, was here doing driver introductions. I wonder if he was also giving advice. Yeah, that was a body slam. Well, he's going to make another Bain, body slam here. Trevor Bain is not going to give up, and it nope. cost Brett Keselowski a spot to the 20 car. And maybe the 18. And here comes the 18 as well. Once you get down on the side, inside, if you can't get back up, you are in trouble, That babe. two cars, we're 200 laps into this race, 214 laps. It looks like it's been through 1,000. It's already got battle wounds all over it. That's that's why they call this Bristol, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the Matt, battleground. <laughs> several stops to fix and seal up the damage, especially around the, the seams of the hood. Now, Keselowski, he's running the teammate Joey Logano setup. Keselowski, always a bottom dweller, not able to run up top, but he's trying to change his style to try to be better, especially here at Bristol. Eighth place battle, Paul Menard, Eric Almirola, Dale Jr. and Ryan Newman. What a foursome there. Yeah, what about that 88 car, though? Back in the top 10 after being two laps down. Yeah, he's doing a great job, and obviously he does have a pretty good race car to be able to, to battle back from two laps down. But we just saw the 43 of Eric Almirola get a run on the 27 of, of Menard, and that's what David I call David Reagan oh. blowing up in turn four. From the bottom, from the bottom, from the bottom, from the bottom. Or is that a rear end issue? Hmm. Kind of hard to tell. A lot of smoke. And things suddenly get quiet as the sixth caution flies at lap 219. I think that might be a little more serious. Happened on the back straightaway. Reagan was up high. Yeah, he went into it, just started smoking going into three. Work, uh, we'll learn from it. We're going to have days like this. Uh, we'll try to smoke out the exhaust pipes. Not good. And under the hood. Carl Edwards Woo. out in front at Bristol. Let's take a break.
one year ago here at Bristol, our friend and colleague Steve Burns lay in the hospital with cancer. And everyone at Bristol stood up to cancer for Steve Burns. A fan tweeted him that night and said, did you watch the whole race? And he sent his last tweet, which said, I went the distance. Steve Burns passed two days later. He is missed and remembered by all of us, and especially by Matt Kenseth, who got a replica of the Gladiator's sword that he won here at Bristol one year ago for winning that race and presented it recently to Steve's son, Bryce and Karen Burns. Steve's wife and Bryson are here today. We're glad to have them with us as we remember our friend Steve. And thank you to Matt for recognizing them with that great honor. Think what I always think about Burns and what he said. You got to be Burns strong. Yep. And, and he, he was right he to was the end. Strong dude. Carl Edwards is our race leader at 222 laps. Speeding penalties on that round of stops to Austin Dillon and Greg Biffle. So they will restart tail end of the longest line, and that's purgatory here at Bristol. Boy, we've had a lot of speeding penalties here today, counting commitment line and tire violations. Eight penalties so far today. Lap leaders here at Bristol today. Well, Joe Gibbs Racing has led all but three green flag laps today. The Sprint LTE Plus network delivers faster download speeds than other national carriers. Sprint better for less. Free pass on that caution, Clint Boyer. David Reagan looks like engine trouble for the number 23 of Reagan. He will join Reed Sorensen out of the race. And as we get close to halfway, a look at our Toyota top performers, Carl Edwards, your leader, Martin Truex in third, Kyle Busch, Rebounding from a blown tire and a speeding penalty. At 13th, Matt Kenseth, 20th. Well, we listened in on Kyle Busch and his team. 35.4 exiting. We cannot get any on exit. Straight sections were all um, fast enough. You can bump up a couple of lights on those others. Uh, we're going to have to re-science that out. I'll talk to you about it later. It's all f***ed up. And for man, our job today is to make the most of it. And, and when he says science it out, the engineers set those lights based on gears and everything else. So it's pretty complicated. His um, his day looks like a, the Great Smoky Mountains here. <laughs> up, down, up, down. And Tale of the Dragon stuff. And we've already heard this season a lot of teams talking about the digital dash and, and those lights and how accurate they are and trying to, to you know, maximize the amount of, uh, you know, the least amount of time on pit road by getting the car right there to the edge of that pit road speed. And it sounds to me like they, they feel like they're, they're off, or at least Kyle feels like those lights are off on his dash. All right, getting ready for the restart. The first driver to pit on this sequence was A.J. Allmendinger, who was 12th. 17 drivers stayed out, so Allmendinger led them off pit road. He'll restart 18th with Jamie McMurray and Matt Kenseth. It's Carl Edwards, a three-time Bristol winner and our pole sitter on point as we get set for this restart. Boy, Ryan Blaney's going to make a race of it, isn't he? I'm telling you, he's got something today. That 21 car is hooked up, and he is running the best race I think I've seen him run so far this year. Working that outside perfectly. The Wood Brothers have one victory here. Here, Elliot Sadler in 2001. Ironically, that iconic 21 beat the 43 to the finish line that day. Vince. Ryan Blaney with that 21 said he's been moving the track bar, trying to get a little bit more grip, but he said it's just making him too free. He said, I'm losing ground rolling the center, although he looked pretty good on that restart, but keep an eye on it. See if maybe he starts getting beat through the center. Dave Blaney, or rather Ryan Blaney, Dave Blaney's son, a winner here in the Camping World Trucks and the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Hey, how about this 88 car? I mean, would you have given him a plug nickel when, uh, when he was two laps down early in this race? And here he is 
working all over the back of Paul Menard. Paul's been having a lot of people work on that rear bumper of his today, but he's still doing a good job hanging in there. All right, buddy, I'll tell you where he's at. Outside, door, still there, door, door bumper clear. I oh, know that's oh, another yeah. way to get it done. He went in there right next to him and then just sort of pushed him wide and took over and muscled his way in there. Menard might be lacking for a little bit of grip <laughs> right yeah. in the middle of the corner. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting here in the 21 or, or how Ryan Blaney was describing what was going on. When you go into the corner here, you get loose. So you want to get that track bar down. But if you do that, it hurts the, the middle of the corner and the car doesn't roll and cut as good through the center. Both the Penske cars again working the bottom and making passes. Matt. Mike, last year both races here at Bristol were at night. Expectations were in the full sun today. This track would take extreme rubber. Joey Miter, Brad Keselowski, spotter, working on passing strategy for the deuce. The rubber width is a full car width. So if you're up against the wall or a tire width off, tire car, template will be in that rubber, referencing turning off the hill and going under somebody. Well, that's easy for you to say I'm from just the, saying, I don't want to from the spotter stand. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that, uh, you know, nobody has a better view of that than when you're inside the car on the racetrack. I mean, you can certainly from, from high up above, like we can with these camera angles, see where that rubber meets the, the grayer, slicker area that's not rubbered up and up next to the wall. But, you know, as a driver, you've got to feel it with the right side tires and the left side tires to truly know where it's at. And, and Jeff, this is probably one of the few tracks where I say, leave me alone. Yeah, I, I don't, I just need, vi I don't need anything. I just need vital information. Otherwise, don't talk to me. I'm busy. Boy, Kozlowski's coming. And so is Kevin Harvick. Harvick tightening it up on second place, Ryan Blaney. There's no doubt in my mind on the long runs, the car to beat is this four car right. of Kevin Harvick. He is so good as the run goes on. Neither of those two have led today, <laughs> and you see that Blaney has been leading with his left rear. <laughs> he's that, that he's playing with disaster. Yeah, that 41 car wore that rear bumper out. I don't know how he even has one left on it. Uh, Kurt Busch oh, was earlier. all over yes, him earlier. Sure Goodness gracious. The best thing he can do is follow that four car, four car of Kevin Harvick and learn from one of the best. Coming up, our Fox NASCAR mid-race report. Who do you like to win it in Bristol?
Pole sitter, Carl Edwards and his Joe Gibbs Toyota is your leader at the halfway point. He's nearing, in fact, just hit 100 laps led. Time now for the Fox NASCAR Mid-Race Report live from Bristol, Tennessee. It's been one of the most exciting full contact races of the season over the first half. Kyle Busch going for his third straight win at a tire problem and two pit road penalties, a speeding penalty, so he hasn't led a lap. His Toyota teammate, Matt Kenseth, has led the most laps, also had a tire problem, took him into the wall and outside of the top 20. Meanwhile, let's check in with Jeff Gordon to see who Jeff's keeping an eye on. Well, I'm keeping an eye on Kevin Harvick, Chris. Last year, a year ago at this time, he led 140 laps, uh, 140 uh, laps at this uh, race, and he was dominant. Now, he's not as dominant leading all those laps, but he's got the car in the long run. He's working traffic brilliant, brilliantly. I believe Kevin Harvick's going to get this done and lead the most important lap, the last one. Jeff, Chris mentioned all the issues with Joe Gibbs racing with fast race cars. The only one not to have a problem so far, Carl Edwards. If he has no penalties or problems, he'll seal the deal today. Oh, Larry, I don't know. I'm worried about those right front tires on those Gibbs cars, but I love the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Only one win here at Bristol, but from the first laps on the track this weekend, he told Chad Knauss, thank you. This is the car I need to win the race. He's been quiet and steady, and he will do just that when the checker flag falls. Look, my guy, Matt Kenseth, his, he's had his bad luck. It's out of the way. I'm saying Matt Kenseth goes to victory circle today for the first time this year. Martin Truex Jr. was so close at Daytona, a hundredth of a second. He led the most laps last week in Texas, had his heart broken. This weekend, he's been in the top five, and they haven't had the car just right. If he gets it just right before the end, he'll be the guy to beat. Sure, he's a rookie, but there is no denying Ryan Blaney is one of the future superstars of this sport. Well, maybe the future is now. In a Ford and Ford teammates Brad Kozlowski and Joey Logano, who each have won twice at Bristol in the past, have combined for multiple pit road penalties today, and that's kept them from the front, although Kozlowski's worked his way back inside the top ten, and pit stops are going to be a key ingredient in deciding who winds up winning this race. And that's your mid-race report. You're watching Fox NASCAR with a car in the wall, and it's Kyle Busch with more problems. An adventurous first half with a couple of wins this year, five Bristol wins, and a rough afternoon, Michael. Yeah, and this damage is much more uh, significant than the first time Kyle hit the wall. This could be the end of the day. You can see oil coming out from under the car. Now let's head back upstairs to Jeff, Daryl, and Mike. A similar incident to what happened to Kyle Busch before. Uh, the car went into turn two from turn one, high on the racetrack, just went straight up to the wall. But this looked like a considerably harder hit. Much harder. Uh, you see the right front all rolled up under the fender there. So uh, this one did a lot of damage. They got, they're going to have to do a lot of repair to get him back in the race. Yeah, and I would be concerned if I'm the 20 of Matt Kenseth, too. These types of problems with right fronts don't fix themselves throughout a race. Uh, it's just it's got to be a camber issue. And you put too much camber in those right front tires, you're going to use them up. Pace, half straight to red. Mm, you can see him uh, clinch and hold on tight. Keep it up there. Another right front. He knew that impact was coming. That one looks a little bit more like yeah. the 20, but that was a significant impact. Very hard. Pit road's open, Vince. Jimmy Johnson into the top five, and for the third stop in a row, no changes, just four tires. Chris? Kevin Harvick happy with his race car. Wants a small adjustment here to get the car to roll a little bit better in the center. Going to have to take a half-rounder wedge out of the rear. Jamie? For Bush, a lot better than they would anticipate they would be today. He's saying the car is pretty good. Let's make an air pressure adjustment to keep up with the track and a four tire stop for Kurt Bush, Matt. And Brad Keselowski, great recovery from that earlier issue, his pit road speeding penalty, and then the bump where they had to fix the damage. Air pressure change on the deuce chassis adjustment, though, for the 19 of Edwards. The car fires off loose on entry and exit and then tightens up near the end. Mike, who's going to win the battle? Wow, close at the end of pit road. Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson in that order. Kevin Harvick, the Advance Auto Parts race off pit road. Ooh, bad news. Trying to win his third Sprint Cup race in a row. Kyle Busch ends against the outside wall. Is it over? We'll see.
Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Quality Guarantee, and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Just past halfway, and the seventh caution is car cycling through. The race started with Dale Earnhardt Jr. having a problem. The ECU unit, one of those electronically controlled units that he had to rework to get back onto the lead lap eventually. Kyle Busch trying to win his third straight race. Bumped by the rookie Chris Busher, then spinning out on his own, had a tire problem. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson. Yeah, the rear end housing had an issue in the back. That, that, that rear tire get loose rubbing the fender and calling him an issue. Lap 187, Matt Kenseth has a tire problem as well. He's led the most laps in this race, 142. And then moments ago, Kyle Busch, a five-time winner here, but he hasn't won since 2011 at Bristol. And this puts him out of the race. Jamie Little is standing by with Kyle Busch. Quite the day for Kyle Busch. I think you passed more cars than anybody, but you're officially done now. Two blown right fronts. Any indication in your mind what led to those? I have no idea. We just kept getting tighter in the long run, but um, not sure why that was. We had a really great car yesterday, fastest in practice, and uh, felt really good about things for today. And I guess it just wasn't meant to be. So um, I hate it for all these guys, all the work and effort, and everybody at M&M's, all our M&M's Mars associates. It's uh, not a day we were hoping for. We had a really fast car. I mean. Like you said, we drove up from the back to the front a couple times a day and showed what we were made of, but um, obviously it doesn't matter when you're in the garage. Tough day for Kyle Busch and Chris. You know that fan that uh, sat in traffic at Martinsville that he surprised with an autograph? Well, she was here today as a guest of Kyle Busch's, but unfortunately her excitement <laughs> is done early. <laughs> I don't think she wants to be in any viral video after the way that happened, but a loyal fan for Kyle Busch as we will continue here from Bristol, Tennessee in just a moment. Look at that top. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Toyota, Let's Go Places, and by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. 
This strategy is nuts. Lug nuts, that is. Teams are gluing up. This is Denny Hamlin's wheels in pre-race. Five nuts on the right side wheels, four on the left sides. They also have some rights with four glued up in case speed becomes a bigger concern than accuracy, and we have had some nutty problems today. Yeah, right side, strong side, but uh, man, don't leave my lug nuts off on the right side. We listened in with Jimmy Johnson's team. We think we're good, we think we're good, but we might have a left rear that could potentially be a little down on uh, lugs there, but nonetheless, I think we think we're good, but just FYI. Yeah. One of the benefits, there's two benefits that come along. Of course, if you do one less lug nut, that's a little bit faster, and they believe that four lug nuts will tighten the wheel up enough to stay on if you hit all four of them tight. But it's also about the wheel coming off that you save speed on only taking four off and putting four on. That's that's you know where the speed really comes. Now here's a stop for Martin Truex. And the car's down and gone, and Right rear changer showing. Uh, I got three. That's not okay. That's I got three. Man, he wasn't panicking, was, so, was he? he wasn't. They, they brought Martin back in. Also, the 27 Paul Menard came back in to tighten lug nuts. Trevor Bain got blocked in by another car, and he lost nine or six up six spots here. Guys, I'm going to take a little bit off the tire changer, and I'd been going back and reviewing that 48 stop. Remember, the signal for the driver to go is the jack dropping. And we saw it at Texas last week. I think it was Matt Kenseth in the 20 car. The jack man is looking at the left front. When the left front man is done, he's letting the jack go, no matter how many he's tight on the left rear. MLB's in full swing. Thursday, Miguel Cabrera, the Tigers take on division rival and reigning World Series champions, the Kansas City Royals. That's 6.30 Eastern in a game you'll only see on FS1. Then Saturday, David Ortiz continues the blistering start to his final season as his Red Sox battle the Astros 3.30 Eastern on FS1 or watch live on Fox Sports Go. Here's the restart lineup because four drivers who did not pit cycle to the front of the field. You're watching from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Landon Castle leads this race from Ty Dillon, Greg Biffle, and Danica Patrick on 40 lap old tires. Let's see how this works out. Well, remember Landon Castle got crashed in qualifying. Don't forget uh, the 14 car. Yeah, the car Ty right Dillon. behind him. Yeah, the Ty Dillon car got into him in qualifying, and there they are running first and second. But this is a great opportunity for us to see, you know, a car that we don't normally see in the front get clean air and, and be up on in the front of this pack and see what he can do. I, I'm excited about watching this, and it's a great opportunity for Landon Castle and that race team. A great strategy move for this Iowa driver and for Ty Dillon, but here comes Carl. Concrete Carl on the move. <laughs> you mean concrete is in racetrack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Just checking. He's been really, really good on this concrete here today at Bristol. I believe Harvick started on the inside on that restart. So yes. we've seen everybody that starts on the inside and unless you're maybe on that front row that really can cost you. Harvick. Here he goes, makes a great move inside the 16. Kevin restarted seventh. He's moved up to fourth. And here is Edwards hunting the lead from Landon Castle. Nice for Bob Jenkins and Front Row Motorsports to lead a few laps here and hang on to the lead. Yeah, he's not going to get it done by just rolling around the bottom. Nope. All right, pressure or slide job? What do you want to do here? <laughs> Both. Whichever I, comes first, first if I'm, I get through him. First, I'm going to apply pressure, and yeah. then I'm going to make the slide job. Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if the pressure doesn't get to him, let me just slide it in front of him. But I think Carl was sort of searching there going, okay, you know I'm faster. You know I have uh, fresher tires. Are you going to just give this to me? I'll try it the easy way first. Okay, you didn't give it to me the easy way. Now I got to do it the hard way. Yeah, but well, no, but this no, is this no. is Landon Ch uh, Castle's big chance. Yeah, right. And I think Carl realizes that. Yeah. You know how Carl is. He's and uh, why why push the issue? And this sponsor, Snap Fitness, Castle brought this sponsor to front row. They were with him with another team last year, and he's got it out in the wind for them, holding off the pole sitter. Oh, this is an opportunity of a lifetime for Landon Castle. 
I think Carl might be able to get up in front of him here down the front straight away. No, not nope. quite. <laughs> you got to love this. I do love it. Now Edwards clears him and goes back into the lead. Pretty good gap here on a lot of good cars. Boy, that was fun for a while. What we saw, uh, I saw a little action off turn two right here. Watch Danica Patrick in the five car Casey Kane. They had a little bit of a history, and you'll see right here. A little bit, yeah. They had a, a incident, little bit right big here, incident in right Fontana. here, and like, uh, okay, I'll let you go. And you know, when you've had a former incident, especially recently with a driver, you've got to give them a little bit of extra room yeah. because there's no tolerance that's there from that driver that you've already had contact with and have a previous uh, history with. Well, well, we, while we watch this, Kevin Harvick moved up into third, passing Ty Dillon. So now it's Toyota Ford Chevrolet in the first three spots. At fourth place, Jimmy Johnson passes Dylan Vince. Well, and they just told Jimmy he just ran the fastest lap out there. So uh, no ill effects of that left rear lug as well as we heard the audio with Chad Knauss telling Jimmy that they may have left one loose. No vibration, no report of any aerial handling out of the 48. Johnson, Biffle, and Patrick all ran their best lap of the race just now. There's Kurt Busch trying the 10. Now remember, they're teammates. Yeah, and, and also just remember Danica was fighting hard still in the lead lap earlier in the race. She was able to do that. And uh, all the Stuart Haas cars right now are running in the top 10. I mean, this is how quickly things can change. I mean, Danica at one point early in this race was the next car to go a lap down when Matt Kenseth and Carl Edwards were trying to get by her. Now here she is in the top 10. Now back behind them, Brad Keselowski trying to gain ground on Jamie McMurray here. This is for 11. Wow. Wow. Man. man. Kaboom. Big shot. McMurray. Take McMurray. you out. That was, that was a drive through. Hey, Mike, Brad Keselowski, always great perspective from behind the seat. Ask Paul Wolf, how are we doing on tires, meaning how many number of sets, because they've stopped six times. Paul told him, we are starting to get a little bit thin. Read that. They've got three sets of sticker tires still left in the pits. Their teammate Logano has five sets of stickers. Meanwhile, Kurt Busch made the pass on Danica. Casey Kane trying to follow suit without quite as much luck. Let's go back to the the hit that uh, shook the Coliseum here. <laughs> the drive through as DW that's right, put it. That's right. <laughs> Bang. I, don't, I can't tell if McMurray got a little loose getting in there or Keselowski oh. just said, oh, I'm he, taking this spot right now. He got a little loose, all right, but it went back wheels up off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt Kenseth passed Greg Biffle to move Matt back up into the sixth spot. Not bad for a fellow who brought out the caution with a cut tire just over 100 laps ago. Yeah, but you you know he's got to be thinking about that right front. 18 had two of them. The 20 had one earlier. If I'm mad, I'm, I'm going to be a little extra careful in that right front. I'd be very worried. Boy, McMurray is, uh, you know, not real happy with his car right now, and he's really struggling and battling with it. And a lot of these drivers are getting up there and, and moving him out of the way. Ryan Newman right behind him, and then Ryan Blaney. You can just see McMurray's car is just not getting through the center of the corner, causing everybody to get a big run on him. He needs a happy meal. Vince? You guys talking about Jamie McMurray and the issues he's having. Remember, he took right sides only on that most recent pit stop. Good point. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's definitely uh, playing a big role here. It's just asking so much of the driver to put you back out there under those conditions. Ah, close. Well, what you're really hoping for, DW, is you just want to run just long enough to where you maintain your track position or decent track position, but where when the caution comes out, everybody's going to come down pit road. Then you can put four on. Now, just ahead of them, Brad Kozlowski has been trying the bottom on the five of Casey Ken Kane and the 10 of Danica Patrick. Uh-oh. Trouble for Jimmy Johnson. What happened? Yep, it's getting loose. Just getting loose, buddy. Wheels loosening up. Wheel. Assure distraction, but assure distraction, just let us know. 
Boy, it just makes you wonder, were they better off to, to would, uh, fix it earlier, Vince? Yeah, just a couple of laps ago, Jimmy said all of a sudden it's getting real loose in. Remember, they had talked about that left rear lug maybe not getting tight. No issues with it until just a couple of laps ago, and he said it just got way too loose. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, when they said they may have an issue, they should have brought him in right then, not have taken a chance. Now look where he is. He was third. He comes back out. 31st, two laps down. Well, there's a lot of different ways that they can look at that information. They go to the camera that they um, that they have over the pit stall. They can talk to the tire changer. So they got to make that decision from the pits. Matt Kenseth moves up to that spot. Chris. Mike, during that last caution, I checked in with Matt Kenseth's crew chief, Jason Radcliffe, about that right front tire. And he said they took a good look at it. The tire temp and the wheel temp weren't an issue. So he doesn't think they're having the same issue that eight to the 18 tire Kyle Busch was having. He said, I think we just got into some debris on the racetrack. The main thing is, he said, the car is just as good as it was those first 100 laps. I agree with that, Vince. He's definitely running good fast lap times, and he's moved up through the field, and he's going to be up here challenging for the lead for long. Oh, you can come back here. Dale Jr.'s come from two laps down. Joey Logano from three laps down, and Chase Elliott from two laps down. A lot of beating and banging Whoa. at Bristol. For more on strategy, we're going to take a look at pit performance. Sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. 185 laps to go. Carl Edwards in the lead. Have a look at his day on pit road. Gaining one position on the first stop. Losing one on the third. So a net even on the day. Four tires on each stop. He was the pole sitter. He is the race leader. Yeah, but he had a comfortable lead. Now he has an uncomfortable lead because that four car is breathing down his back. One car between Harvick and, uh, and Carl right now and Harvick looking low and he's going to get him he's right here. Is that pick that we've talked about? Casey Mears is going to be the pick, the number 13. Harvick's car really, really goes through the middle. Pretty nice here. Yeah, he hooked the bottom, but he didn't get the exit. And Carl clears him, but stays high. I think I'd be the four oh, cars oh, in a pretty good spot. Had to check up. That's it. 
We now, used, now we used to call that the, the, they used to call that the chrome horn. I love that right there. That move is awesome. Oh, that, just, was, that was Harvick at his finest. Yeah, you, you go in there and you brake like you're going to slow down. Then you let off the brakes and accelerate and shoot in front of them. Jimmy Johnson coming, trying to get one of his two laps back. Yeah, he desperately needs to get by these leaders so he can get back at least one lap down. I think he can do it. His car's just a tick quicker, and he's able to run the bottom a little bit better because of the tires he's got on. He might be able to get back up there and get around Harvey. Yeah, we talked about Carl Edwards on pit road. As far as I'm concerned, they've had an excellent day because everybody else has had a problem right. on pit road. Just don't have a problem, and that's a win. Now, Casey Mears was fighting hard because he was the first car one lap down, wanted to stay in that position. A.J. Allmendinger saying they have uh, some rear end trouble right up there in front of the leader, Matt. And Mike, if you look at the 47 of Allmendinger and the 27 of Menard, both cars had the 20 cars in the fence. That would be Matt Kenseth. He yep. slammed the wall in turn three. Right front down, down right again. Front, right, right front. I'm telling you, they have not solved that issue. It's nope. not going to go away. Whatever they're doing, they're all doing. But it, well, those two guys. But it hasn't brought correctly. out the caution this time. Kenseth that made it up to third place. No caution. Oh, this, yeah, this will do him in. As he limps to pit road, Harvick, Edwards for the lead. And Harvick's working hard to get by the 27 and Menard. Needs to clear him here. He's going to move him up. And does. There he goes. Now he comes to 48. That's a big move right there for 48 as well. Jimmy Johnson with fresh tires. Now he's two laps down trying to get one back here. And here's a look at Matt Kenseth and what happened. Yeah, different end of the speedway. One and two last time. It's uh, going down into turn three. And you can see right there, the car just never turns. Doesn't make heavy contact, but uh, definitely a right front tire. Almost. Oh, and we got a contact off of turn four, but no wreck. They're still green. <laughs> 30. Yeah, 34 and the three. Man, the three wide, but we got smoke oh. coming off the left rear of Austin Dillon. Yeah, damage to the three. From all of that happening right with our leaders in the midst of it. Oh, that smoke. I don't like that. Middle of the corner, left rear. That won't last long. You know, it looked to me like Matt Kenseth felt that right front going down and checked up a little early, and that, I think, minimized the damage. It could have been a lot worse. Well, if they'd had a caution, he wouldn't have been too bad of shape, but because right. of no caution, he's four laps down. Let's look at what happened with Chris Busher, the yellow 34, and that red topped three of Austin Dillon. Oh, the one well. car turns down. The threes right there. They make contact. Three gets loose. <laughs> there's Almendinger there's right Almendinger in the midst of it as usual. Of it all. Wow. <laughs> Almendinger just gave Jamie Mack a boot in turn two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right there, it looks like the three got into the one and turned them loose. But it looked to me like the one turned down er sooner than that. Caution's out. Now the caution is out. Uh, might be debris in turn two. Yeah, we've got a slow car, a 30 car here Josh coming around uh, three and four. Looks oh, like we yeah. got some parts hanging off of it. Wow, the back end of that's all folded up. Now, Matt Kenseth's car behind the wall, last year's winner. Four Bristol victories for Kenseth. They're working on it. Watch the black car, middle of your screen there, Josh Wise. I had to guess a very similar incident to what we saw with the 20 and the 18. And then the left rear damage from, I think that was McDowell that couldn't get away, avoid contact. Well, we are at eight, and each of the last eight Bristol races have had eight or more caution flags. Look at these two cars, the 20 and the 18, both with yeah. the same issue. Paul Menard will get the free pass after all that infighting. Pit Road's open, Vince. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has come back into the top 10, but his car in the balance has taken a little bit of a swing for the worse. He said it's gotten way too tight off, so they're going to make chassis adjustment wedge on the left and right side. Chris? Kevin Harvick once again happy with his car, just small adjustments on these last couple stops, still wanting that car just to turn a little bit more in the center of the corner. Jamie? Kurt Busch worked his way up to third, said it's the best. The car has been turning all weekend long. Just a minor air pressure adjustment and four tires once again for Kurt Busch, man. Brad, Ke Brad Keselowski says the car is building tight as the laps go on, but the car is turning so much better this run. Meanwhile, the 19 of Carl Edwards, they're two laps of the good. They're going to pack it full of fuel. He says the car is still too loose. He wants a little bit more of a significant adjustment. This time, the last time, it was just too slight. 
19 and the four lead him off pit road and how about Landon Castle in the 38 you know he led on the last restart and pits from fifth place nice job. Carl Edwards did his team just put him in a position to win. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Ford. We go further so you can. 165 laps to go. Let's have a look at how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring. Joey Logano back on the lead lap in ninth. Danica 16th. Now Denny Hamlin just took the wave around 20th, as did Ryan Newman 21st. The question is there, can they make it to the end? I would say yes, but my trends say we have an average of 11 cautions per race in the spring. We've only had eight. More to come. <laughs> I love it, Larry. I agree Good. with you on that, Larry. <laughs> More to come. <laughs> Back under green. Carl Edwards clears Harvick. Brad Keselowski trying on the outside. And then Kurt Busch. Harvick better hurry up and get up there yeah. right there. Yeah. Yes, sir. He knows it. Keselowski's not going to cut him an inch, though. No, but he knew he had to get up there. He was going to be in big trouble. Look at the damage on the 41. Has he got a left rear tire going down? A lot of smoke on the 41, and that restart is under review by NASCAR. Seeing some smoke coming out of this 41. Trouble from front the straight away, Casey guys. Mears gets turned Whoa. around, colliding with Allmendinger. Racket behind us here. What Caution. a save by Casey Mears. They were three wide off turn four here with a 47 in the middle, and I think he got into the 13. Restart's uh, the re good, no problem. Yeah, the restart, there was no penalty on the restart. You have to start within the zone. And they were three wide coming off turn four. Keep an eye on the 13. Oh, trouble for the 48. Watch it. Watch this, Mike. Though we're three wide right here, coming off turn four, and they start just kind of bouncing off each other a little bit. You see, 47 get into the 46. That shoots him over into the side of Casey Mears, 13. And how in the world? He picks up the banking right here. Nice job on the throttle, spinning the rear tires. Roof flap came up. Dirt Every, tracking. Yeah, baby, that was a nice save. Hey, Casey Mears' dad, Roger, one of the best off-road races ever. <laughs> hey, that <laughs> apple didn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> no, Proud of that, wouldn't he, Mike? <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, that was just kind of putting it into a position that maybe. Watch it, come on. Come on, watch 13 here. Watch him, watch him, come on. Maybe just was too tight. Yeah, of, you can do uh, three wide. To try you can that. do three wide, but everything has to go perfect, and it didn't go perfect yeah, there. Now, how did right. Jimmy Johnson get damaged in all that? Checking up right there, you see him. Uh, I think he got hit by that black car up high. It's like the front bumper, the 31 and the 48 just hooked. Yeah. That's pretty hard to avoid even casual contact here. Quite a bit of damage. He's had some damage on the right side, right too. Right side, right front. You can see the lettering rubbed off of that. There's Newman's damage. got the damage back here on his car. Now, Carl Edwards is being reminded, not warned, but reminded by NASCAR that he has to maintain speed coming to the restart zone. As they reviewed the last restart, now Edwards on the outside is the control car. The restart box starts there. Ah, I yeah, see what happened. See what, he what happened was he almost accelerated a tiny bit, but then as it was time to go, he actually didn't accelerate and almost slowed down a little bit. And, you know, NASCAR's watching for that. Yeah, they just. Right. They'll give you a warning. Let's join Chris Neville. I am Matt Kenseth out of his car as your team doing some repairs to that right front corner. Matt, I talked to your crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe. He said the temperatures looked good on that corner. Any idea what's going on there? Uh, we just keep blowing right front tires. I, I don't know why. The first one was a little confusing. I knew I blew right front, but I, I thought they were telling me it wasn't flat, so I was a little confused on that one. And this one um, just blew a lot earlier, and the angle was a lot worse hitting the wall. So we really weren't very tight. Our Dollar General uh, Camry was, was pretty fast today. Um, I was encouraged again by our speed. Obviously, don't have the result, but um, put a big old smile on my face and go to Richmond and try again. Thanks, Matt. Matt Kenseth has run well. This season, he led 142 laps here, but has not had the finishes to show for it. Got shuffled on the final lap of the Daytona 500 on the final corner. Fueling trouble at Atlanta. Spun at Las Vegas. Two penalties in California. Loose wheel in Texas. And now this. I thought today was a day. I thought he'd overcome all that. We keep saying that. that every week, and unfortunately, DW, but we know it's going to happen. Jimmy Johnson penalty. Too many men over the wall. Carl Edwards top 10 finishes in the first seven races five more this year than last year already. Jeff, limit of time switch to Sprint and save 50 percent on most Verizon AT&T or T-Mobile rates Sprint better for less. I'm just going to point out to Jeff that Carl's got that little small steering wheel in there. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know, you know, his dirt track experience, maybe they ran a little bit smaller steering wheels. So that's something that they, a lot of drivers are gravitating towards that with the, the, the steering boxes that are in the cars and the steering wheels. Just a much more positive front end on these cars these days. I don't know about you, but I'm pulling for Landon Castle. <laughs> you know, young driver, great future, a kind of mid-level team, front row motorsports. They've led 20 laps of this race, third most of the day, and they restart eighth. This is where things are just so intense on these oh, restarts, yeah. especially for Kevin Harvick. He's really got to push hard and roll around the bottom if he's going to get up into that outside lane. Well, we're, we're actually we're drawing near into. I mean, we got 150 laps to go roughly. Uh, you got this is uh, the games are over now. You got to go hard. Got to get a, get going. What's well, interesting, the 41 did not come into pit. He had that tire rub, so he must have really worked it back and forth to try to knock that fender away from the left rear. It doesn't seem to be smoking, or at least not as much now. Jamie and they had lowered the air pressure on the 41 and they didn't say anything about a tire rub but he said don't lower it anymore I'm dragging everything on the track. Oh Casey Kane slid off turn number four and gave up spots to Harvick and Keselowski. Yeah Casey really works that outside lane more than anybody a little bit higher than anybody off of turn four and that time he jumped the cushion. Larry at this stage would anybody dare gamble on Sunoco race fuel and try to go the distance. Yeah I mean I think we're there especially even if you add in that last caution the window is about 150 to 160 but again Mike 
we're not going to go the rest of this race without a caution. Spin and turn two. There it is. There you go, Larry. Brian Scott goes around and into the wall. That's two. <laughs> and Larry wasn't even looking in that direction when he made that prediction. How many we got to go, Larry? Two more. One more. <laughs> oh, no. oh, gosh. 150 laps to go. And here's what happens to Brian Scott, the 44. Yeah, he just gets oh, loose. Yeah, he just drove in there and the thing didn't, it just came around. Here's right before all that happened. Three wide with the six, the 11, the 47, the 24. 11 comes up, gets into the left rear of the six. And then this is happening behind him. That's some dead good, good racing right there, boys. Probably be no consolation to Scott that his teammate, Eric Almarola, will likely get the free pass on this caution. Welcome back to Bristol, 147 laps to go. Here's your Bush race summary. Dale Earnhardt Jr. fell two laps down on the initial start of the race, fought back to the lead lap. He's ninth. Both team Penske cars penalized on pit road. Kyle Busch went out of the race. His first seat, first one finish this season outside the top five. As they load up, uh, very damaged. Joe Gibbs, Toyota. Matt Kenseth also with trouble as we get ready for the restart. Edwards and Kurt Busch. Toyota and Chevy will restart on the front row. Kevin Harvick's Chevy, Brad Keselowski's Ford in row two. Casey Kane's Chevy and pleasant surprise Landon Castle in his Ford, row three. Joey Logano was three laps down at one point. He's back up on the lead lap with Ty Dillon. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Martin Truex in the fifth row. Greg Biffle and Ryan Blaney. Danica Patrick and Ricky Stenhouse together on row seven. In addition to Bristol, Gotham has had its share of nagging problems. Their problems are, you know, dead guys coming back to life, ice cold killers, and exes who just can't seem to move on. Check it out, Gotham, Wrath of the Villains, all new tomorrow on Fox.
I'll bet they don't have as many crashes in contact as we have at Bristol. You know what I'm watching right now? We got the front row. These neither of these drivers have won this year. The second row, both of these drivers have won. Who's going to be more aggressive? Uh, Kurt Busch. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> I don't know. You got Keselowski, somebody that uh, likes to get aggressive as well. Well, here oh, we go. Like I'm talking no. about right there. Oh, boys, easy, boys, easy. We just saw three wide not work too well off a of turn four. Look at this. Kurt Busch is pushing hard. Ooh, he's going to get by him. He, but he's got a clear Carl he Edwards two, and does. He Boy, Carl and he does. does not want to see that happen. Boy, look at it. That 41 jumped sideways over that bump you were talking about, DW, off of two. Carl thought about crossing right back under and then thought better of it. The Penske Fords both had trouble today, but they're back. They are third and eighth and hooking the bottom like they were at the start of the race. Yeah, the 41, the four, and the uh, 19s right there, the two. We got some uh, teammates up here running hard right now. And Landon Castle hanging tight up there as well. Jamie. Well, they used a little strategy to get up there. He started the day 28, but they've been throwing all kinds of changes at this car all day long, and it worked. The balance is the best it's been all day. They didn't even make any adjustments on the last stop. Good for Landon Castle. Yeah, no kidding. I, no, I, we always, all of us pull for an underdog. So that's somebody we can all pull for. He and crew chief Donnie Wingo. Donnie Wingo, the crew chief for the 21 car, when Trevor Bain won the Daytona 500. Great little car. I mean, great tree. I mean, this chief. is huge. He's holding up Joey Logano. Joey Logano dominated this race, what, last year or the year before? That he did, Matt. 29th and 9th under the previous green flag run for Joey Logano. Spun his tires, though, on the previous restart. But a good one this time. His car bounce wise was really good the last run. It started to get a little free at the end, but Logano finally back up to where he started. Well, he's under pressure now for Martin Truex. Yeah, what he wants to do is he wants to show the fender. He wants to get that fender. He diamonds this corner. He comes off, tries to get under uh, Landon Castle to let him know he's there, trying to use a little intimidation. Not happening. Not well, here's working. Some intimidation right here at the four and the two. Harvick under Keselowski. And he I just love that drove pass. it in there. I love that pass that Harvick makes. That's how you make a pass at Bristol. Matt Kenseth back in the race. Brian Scott back on pit road. 137 to go. What about what about that five car? I mean, he's had a pretty decent day, and here he is. Chris. Chris. Yeah, putting another good weekend together after last weekend in Texas. Talking with his crew chief, Keith Rodden, he said last week, good shot of confidence for us. We went down a lap early, fought all night long, got our first top ten of the year, and this race has just gone clean for him. They were a little tight early on, but right now he's got a good race car. Yeah, he just needs to close the deal. That's one of the things that five car needs to do today, just like last week, bring it home in a top five. All day long, the fight for first car one lap down has been a tough one. And now it's the 47 and 48, Allmendinger and Johnson battling to be the first car one lap down. And you're not going to get any more aggressive than these two. I mean, we saw what A.J. Allmendinger's done on road courses, saw what he did at March. Oh, oh, they made no. contact. Well, I think they had a check up for Trevor Bain. Well, yeah, it looked like the 47 may have gotten to the six a little bit. He got checked up and the 48, had a big run, and then he made contact with the 47. I know you go. I know you can get up high off turn two, but there was not enough room for what Jimmy Johnson was trying to do. Chase Elliott. Whoa, 17 got loose. I think he stayed out of the wall, though. Huh? And, and who comes right up on his back bumper? Danica. <laughs> you could see here the throttle on uh, AJ Allmendinger's car in that. Uh, one shot where the 48 was behind him and obviously something happened between him and the six and he had to check up a little bit and Jimmy got into him. I mean the 17 and the 10 are running 15th and 16th or uh, 14th and 15th right now They're both having pretty decent days when I like the job that Ricky Stenhouse jr. Is doing here Man. too. He spun out earlier. It's making a nice comeback. Here's that battle This is an important battle on the racetrack to get back to be that first car one lap down Vince well, that 48 of Jimmy Johnson had some pretty significant left rear damage right on that left corner. And when they brought him in to repair it, they were a little concerned that the crush panel was going to rub against the top of that left rear tire. But so far, no problems with it at all. A bit of a break for the 48. Matt? Almendinger trying to turn his day around. He was a top 10 contender. Then shortly past halfway, they had taken right side tires, and they had a loose right front. Had to pit. 
lost a lot of track position. Right now, though, the car just a tick on the tight side. Boy, there's bump and bang all over the track. Michael McDowell just sent Casey Mears into the next straightaway because of a move he didn't like. Uh, they're the third and fourth cars one lap down. Mike, this is when and the rookies are together once again. <laughs> this is when your patience have run out. Right now, you're about to exceed the limits of your patience. Casey Kane's about to get the two of Brad Keselowski, and the lead has tightened up. Carl Edwards has caught Kurt Busch here. That's and Mike, you've been, you've been, we've been racing hard. We've had a lot of green flag racing, and and I know that these guys are in great shape. But this oh. is when a little bit of fatigue, mentally and physically, sets in. Jamie. I'm really impressed with what the 41 is doing. Tony Gibson, I talked to him this morning. This is the same car they had their best finish of the year with in Atlanta, but it has had no speed in Bristol this weekend. He said we're maybe a top 10 car, but not a race winning car. Look who's leading right now. I think they've adjusted perfectly on this race car. Very well. Casey Kane battling Kozlowski. He had gotten right to Brad's <laughs> bumper two laps ago. Tries the bottom shot, but that didn't work. You know, no. Casey Kane won a sprint car race a few weeks back. Ever since he won that sprint car race, it seems like he's coming to the racetrack with a little more confidence, and they had that nice finish at Texas, and now he's putting another great performance here in Bristol. 122 to go. Chase Elliott, 10th over Ty Dillon, 11th. We talked about Landon Castle, but Ty Dillon, those two guys got together qualifying the other day. But both those guys have had amazing runs today. Both of them running right here in the top uh, 11 right now for the 14. Yeah, Dillon was trying to start his qualifying run. Castle had finished his, was coming off track. Ty spun out and crashed into the 38. Oh. This battle has not gone away. It is only intensifying. Bump Jimmy knows he's got to get by this 47 in case that caution comes out. Bump and run is going to become bump and thump here. Oh, he is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on him. Well, there is absolutely no give up in that 47. I can tell you that. You're going to have to take it. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I think that's, uh, you know, Jimmy Spotter Earl that's saying you got to get by him. You got to get by him and there's going to be a caution. Go now. Oh, contact. Clear, clear, clear. I think that was Earl trying to set up, telling Jimmy that so Jimmy would try even harder. Now exactly. I don't think I can try any harder. Now the 43 behind them, Eric Almirola's on the lead lap. No threat to those two. But Austin Dillon in the three is also one lap down. But don't you love it, Jeff? They're talking about that debris, Earl. Ah, see, that's Chad Canals telling Earl about the debris to pass that Outside. message along to Jimmy there. Outside. Oh, he almost had him. Nope. Clear. Man, but, but that that's was why so Jimmy keeps fighting so hard because they think there might be a <laughs> caution coming. I, the, the two car. Oh my gosh! Look at this. By the way, we haven't heard any. Something's wrong with the two car. It. I think. I think he's slowing down. Losing a lot of spots is Brad Keselowski. As the lead battle tightened up, he went to the high side and now is backing up. Got a problem, I'm not sure what it is. Don't yet know why, but there was some contact. Leader single file now. Have a look here. Yeah, he's trying to get down out of the way and he's going to get run over. He's got to get in the pits. It's got to be a tire. Yeah, he's got either a slow leak or something. And Kozlowski will pit. He was fourth. Now he's going to lose one, maybe two laps with just over 100 to go. And you know, Jamie talked about the 41 of Kurt Busch. In my opinion, he still doesn't have a good enough car to, to be out front and make passes for the lead, but he did a great, great job being aggressive on that restart and got this lead, and he's earned it, and he's keeping it. Matt. Flat tire on the two of Brad Keselowski. Under green, you just enter pit road of the side that you're pinning on. Chassis adjustment barely completed when Keselowski pulled off. The team is looking at that right front inside shoulder where the center section meets the sidewall. That's where there is some damage, but they're looking to see exactly what caused it. 110 laps to go. Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards keeping very close company at Bristol. You stay with us, we'll stay with the action. Getting a headache. Woo.
bump and thump. <laughs> Pip and roll, you saw it all as the leaders came up on quite a battle among lap cars just in front of them. But Carl Edwards forged past with Kirk Bush and Kevin Harvick in third. Martin Truex, Joey Logano, the top five. 21 cars on the lead lap, the last of which Matt DiBenedetto got the free pass two cautions ago. Dale Earnhardt Jr. passes Landon Castle for eighth. Let's take our inside ride. Sponsored by Nationwide. Oh, oh he almost got the ball. Kirk Bush gets in the side of Eric Almarola. Kevin Harvick goes by way on the outside, three wide. And into second. Carl Edwards has gotten away in the traffic. I'm watching that Jimmy Johnson. It's almost like Jimmy says, look, if I don't get this lap back, if I don't stay in front of these leaders, my race is over anyway, because he is forcing his way around well, this track. Well, first he was trying to get ahead of the 47 to be the first car. Three wide. One lap down. Now he's back to two laps down now that the leader's gotten by him. He was Carl trying. Edwards is not waiting around. He's Ever, got to clear all this lap traffic. I, what I love was the spotter was telling him there's debris, chance of debris, go hard. Chad told him, chance of debris, go hard. He was going as hard as he could go, for heaven's sake. No, but you know who did a great job through all that? The 47 of A.J. Allmendinger. He cleared all that and got away. He's still ahead of the 19. However, Paul Menard is now the first car one lap down as Edwards tries to get away from the field. More audio from Jimmy Johnson's team. Jimmy, you're doing a great job, man. I know it's painful. Just take it easy on yourself as best you can. If perhaps the thing goes green, we're one of the only cars that can make it. So nice and smooth. Larry, would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I would. I mean, right now, what Chad's trying to do, Mike, I mean, he's just trying to get this 48 car and Jimmy Johnson through the end of this race. Yeah, he's uh, going to tell me he's got some oceanfront property in Arizona with this keeps going. 11 car is in the wall off turn two over there, guys. Denny Hamlin limping down the back straightaway. Hamlin is the third Joe Gibbs car to hit the turn two wall today. I'd say it looks very similar. Lap 410, 90 to go. He was 15th. They fixed that Where's fender. They fixed that right front uh, fender. I'd have never done that. I'd have left that open. <laughs> Keep that tire cool. Here's a look. Same way Damn. back up in the three and four there. Just very similar to what we saw the 18 and 20 do. So now pit stops with 90 laps to go. The pits are open. We know they can make it on fuel. Who's going to come and get tires? Oh, Mike, no question. Yeah. Four tires and yeah, four up with say, you. I was going to say all of them. <laughs> yeah. Carl Edwards audio. I pulled whatever you want to do. I think everybody's going to come get tires behind us. My bike got is we got to get tires, but I look back and there's going to be someone that tries to make it. Vince? Martin Truex Jr. had an unscheduled pit stop earlier, but they fought their way back. They spent a lot of the day inside of the top five. Martin says it's pretty good, but he feels like he just needs a little bit more for the long run. Four tires and a little bit of wedge from Crew Chief Colburn. Chris? It's been small adjustments for Kevin Harvick. The second half of this race right now saying he can't get through the center of the corner, so we see a wedge adjustment at that left rear. Also, Kevin saying there's some rubber patches on the racetrack, and when he hits them, he loses the front end. Jamie? And Kurt Busch led 41 laps that last run. Car is pretty good. They're going to put air pressure back in both rear tires. A four-tire change and fill it up with fuel, Matt. It's a whole new ball game. Joey Logano back in the fight, chasing his third Bristol win. The car a little free on entry and just a little bit free on exit, but it is fast. It has a speed. Meanwhile, you heard the radio communication with Carl Edwards. In fact, right before that, Dave Rogers said, this is where I make my money. What do you want to do? What they did was get four tires and lead everybody off pit road. Edwards has led more laps this season in eight races than he led in all 36 races last year. 
big stack up as they exit pit road. 88 laps till we see a winner in the last great Coliseum. Mm -mm. 85 laps to go in Bristol, where you're looking at some of the social media tweets and texts and Instagrams and everything. Fox NASCAR on a beautiful Sunday at Bristol. Three Stewart Haas cars in the top 10, three Hendrick Chevys in the top 10, but it is Carl Edwards Toyota, the pole sitter. That has led 191 laps here today. Going to be 84 to go as the pace car pulls in. Toyota, Chevy, Chevy, Toyota, and Joey Logano's Ford on the restart. Edwards takes off. Truex for second. I was going to say, Truex took off as well. When I look in my mirror, that'd be the guy I'd want behind me versus uh, the four of the 41. And Kurt Busch still smoking. Yeah, when the pressures are down low after a pit stop, that thing really drags the racetrack and rubs the fender. Well, you heard him say, don't let any more air on my tires. I'm dragging everything I got. I think what he meant to say is, can you put a little more in him? <laughs> I mean, that's... Right with that. Joey Logano, there's that tire rub. Right rear is what's in, rubbing. Sparking like a yeah, the sparks are from when it hits the racetrack. The the smoke is from when the tires flexing, the sidewalls flexing and hitting that uh, left rear fender well. Yeah, if it's just low air and it's rubbing there a little bit, that'll go away in just a few laps. And I don't, I don't, I'm not real worried about that. But that thing is banging off the racetrack. Yeah, that's that, those sparks and that banging off the racetrack is really going to affect them off a of turn two. Casey Kane clears Logano, so it's a five-car breakaway out front. Chase Elliott back in play. Yeah, He's the leading rookie right now, going after Casey Kane. How about wow. Chase Elliott? Wow. I don't think we've mentioned Whoa. his name since the start of the race. That, what a slide. That was a, he almost over, overslid it. Uh, man, did he carry some speed in there. He saw an opportunity. Looked like the five-car, again, sort of jumped that cushion off of turn four, lost the momentum. The 24 took advantage of it. Chase Elliott up to fifth. Jamie. And he started his day 19th, worked his way up to 7th, about lap 170. He had a loose wheel. They pitted under green. He went down two laps. They got that back, and now the car is the best it has been, and they're running in the position they finished last week, which was a career best. 
One of many incredible comebacks today. You know, we've seen a heck of an effort between these two right here, battling it out. Uh-oh, Vince. Bad news for the 78. Ryan Tru or, uh, Martin Truex Jr. says he believes he has a loose wheel. Oh. You've got to be kidding. But you're in second place. What do you do? Oh, you got to come. You, gotta come. you don't have, you a don't have choice. any choice. If you think you have a loose wheel, if it's getting, the, the, the sign is the vibration. If the vibration gets worse, you have to come in. We heard him tell Jimmy Johnson that it might be loose, and in a few laps, he was in the pits. Getting worked over by Kirk Busch. Larry, do you leave that, you, you tell him, do you leave that decision up to the driver? No, absolutely not. I, I mean. I mean, this time it's bad. That's far ready. There he comes now. He's got to come to pit road. Well, Larry, wouldn't you say you, you get as much information from the driver so that you can help him make that decision? Absolutely. You add to it. That'll move rookie Chase Elliott to third. Kurt Busch to fourth, Joey Logano to fifth. Yeah, Chase took advantage of that whole situation with the 78. Great job getting by both of them. What I love about Chase is that he, you, we, don't, we haven't talked much about that kid all day long. But when it's the end of the day, here we are within 100, with a 75 laps to go, and he's in the hunt. He's got a shot. Does that remind you of somebody else that uh, has the last name Elliot? <laughs> yeah, like his dad. <laughs> exactly. I just think at what point are these teams going to start thinking about doing four lug nuts? And the, the, the risk versus the reward has just not it, been there. It's biting them, man. It's biting them. He got to, got to do something. Brad Keselowski, a lap down. Matt? Mike, no lug nut issues for Keselowski. The deflation signs on the inside sidewall was because when we took a shot of the wheel, he had made contact with another car. It had broken the outer valve stem, so that's why he had the significant air leaking out. Boy, Kyle Larson, Jimmy Johnson, uh, just almost having a big moment there in turn two, along with the 46. Michael Annette, they almost ended up in one pile. I tell you what, that Kyle Larson now, you can tell he's a, you can tell he drives a sprint car. I love to watch him on the high oh, side. Oh, man. He works it so well. Larson, though, 38 laps down. Yeah, oh, I know. I was hoping to see him make some of those great slide jobs we yep. saw him making yesterday in the Xfinity race, but unfortunately, they've had their problems today. Well, I've seen him make some, and I guess he's practicing for another day because <laughs> <laughs> he's still doing it. Three of the four Joe Gibbs cars have had tire issues. Carl Edwards leading has had no problems. Jamie? Yes, and that would be seven blown right fronts total for the three cars. I just talked to Goodyear. They said the first blown right front on Kyle Busch, they're pretty certain, was a melted bee. The other six, they said, is a Joe Gibbs racing phenomenon. They aren't sure what's causing it, but they look identical. I know what I'd be telling Carl if I was Dave Rogers. We don't have the same thing the other three have. We got something right. totally different. Well, <laughs> oh, no. Joe, turn four. Almarola into the wall. Stay low, stay low. Hard. You're going to slide down. Stay low. Yellow. 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 Hard contact. Got a good shot there. You know, that was the 78 of Mark Truex Jr. who just came down pit road to put those tires on because of the loose wheel. He made an aggressive move with newer tires, made contact with the left rear of the 43 and spun him around. Eric Almarola was running 19th. On the lead lap, he's Watch the 43. Watch the 78 dive in here. Yep. And he just gets a little bit loose. He comes up, and then the 43 comes down, and they just make contact. Yep. One going up, one coming down, one going around. And a bunch of them trying to avoid. <laughs> here it is in real time. And A.J. Allmendinger gets the free pass. Twelfth caution of the day. Pretty heavy damage to Richard Petty's Ford. No bacon for Truex. <laughs> no, no Christmas card, no bacon. Mm -hmm, no bacon. Sixty two laps to go. Now everybody was just in Larry. What less than 30 laps ago. Now what do you got doing? 20 laps on the tires. Absolutely. And we have 20 drivers on the lead lap. If you're up there in the top dozen. Absolutely. You're not going to come in. Pits are still closed right now. But I think when they open it they will stay out.
So we're under the 12th caution with 62 laps to go next weekend. NASCAR heads to Richmond, Virginia, now, continuing our short track Virginia. swirl. We're making a sprint to Virginia for some good old Richmond racing. This track may be short, but it sure ain't sweet. Get ready for another week of beating and banging down south. Coverage begins at 10.30 a.m. Eastern on FS1 and continues at 12.30 on Fox. Wreck around the scene for Eric Almarola's car. And now we have 19 lead lap drivers plus AJ Allmendinger who will get the free pass. Who have a big decision to make. You know, in, in my opinion, Mike. Yeah, of course, there's I, I agree with Larry. There's probably the first dozen that aren't going to come down pit road. But then the next dozen make because what are there 20 cars on the lead lap? They've got that decision to make, and I think a lot of them will come. And all I don't want to be is the first car that has older tires, because those newer tires are going to eat me up on the restart. Carl Edwards has had a flawless day. He's led 216 laps. He is the only Joe Gibbs Toyota not to have an encounter with the turn two wall. It's gone all his way so far. I want you to take a look here. We've been, again, watching the right front tires coming off of Carl Edwards' car. This one right here was the first one that came out that had 53 laps. This one is the one that just came off that had 62 laps. So I think they've not had a problem so far. I think they're in pretty good shape. Personally, I agree with what Daryl said earlier. I think it's something to do with the front end geometry, like the camber, the front camber, leaning it in to make that car turn. Well, and we know that that helps the cars not only turn, but just find speed. And, and there's a very fine line there between pushing the limits too far and, and causing problems. And, and I do wonder, all those JGR cars have been extremely fast this weekend, if maybe those others might not have pushed it a little bit further. And I know the 19's hoping they didn't push it that far. A little bit can be a lot. Oh, yes. They've got Eric Almirola's car hooked up, but Eric did not get out of the car for a long time. He kept the window net up. Uh, that is a universal sign to track crew that the driver uh, is unable to get out under his own power. So safety crew spent a long time sitting there talking with him, and finally he climbed out on his own. Uh, he and his spotter and crew chief have been invited to the NASCAR hauler after the race. I heard the NASCAR, but all we needed was a push back. We just don't have reverse gear. If you scan it, we just don't have reverse. All we needed was a push back. And that's why he didn't get out of the car. He wanted to be pushed to the pits. Yeah, I, I could see him waving his hands inside the car. He pulled forward and he and he got up to the inside wall, but he couldn't get back go uh, back up because he didn't have reverse. You could see him saying, please push me back and nobody pushed him back. And then I guess they made him get out of the car. So he should not be going this many laps down just because he doesn't have reverse. Unless, well, that, unless NASCAR feels you must have reverse to continue on. Well, they'll be discussing that after the race in the NASCAR hauler with the officials. Chase Elliott sits third. Nice comeback for him after a loose wheel earlier. Only one rookie has ever won here. Dale Earnhardt, 1979. In fact, Earnhardt won his first two starts at Bristol. In their first starts, Darrell was 30th, Jeff 17th. You know, this is that time where if I'm Chase Elliott, I think I'd rather be fourth than be third. Because if you're if you're third, that inside lane is really tough to get going. The outside lane seems to be the preferred lane, and you can lose more spots than you can gain. Let's see who will be the first to pit road. Greg Biffle, followed by his teammate Ricky Stenhouse and Trevor Bain, all the Roush Cadeers. Then Clint Boyer comes in. Paul Menard and Matt DiBenedetto. Those are the only lead lap cars that choose to pit. It's seven laps to go, and we're not back to green yet, but uh, that's a lot of laps. Yeah, that's pretty much 11th on back. We'll take a break from Bristol, but you won't miss a thing. You're watching Fox NASCAR coverage.
showing amazing composure this year. We're going to need that today. 500 laps. Not sure if battery one came disconnected, and we're running on two now. Yeah, it was good until we went to green. Three four just about bailed in the corner there and picked our rear wheels up. Did we run into it? Yeah, we got into him. Getting ready to go back to green with 54 laps to go. Carl Edwards has led half of the race so far. What kind of deals are being made for this restart? Talk Corella into anything yet? I'm working on him, but he ain't, uh, he ain't saying much. I'll no, just mess with you. He ain't gonna listen to you. No, I mean, Corelli might listen to me, but Kurt ain't gonna listen to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick Corelli, former standout in the truck series, is Kurt Busch's spotter on the 41. That's Rick in There's the middle Rick. right there. Yep. Well, it depends on what their deal was with how many laps to go. <laughs> so yeah, there is that. The JGR cars, <laughs> they had that. it with 10 to go. Heck, we got 54 laps to go here. Yeah. And we're on one to go with 20 cars on the lead lap. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Now here's something I'm looking for on this restart. That four car takes off, but it seems like his second to third gear has a big jump in it, and he really seems to lose momentum as he shifts to third gear, or maybe it's spinning the tires, but uh, he's got to get a little bit better restart if he's going to get into second and have a shot at yep. really putting a move on that 19. Carl Edwards won this race two years ago. He's a three-time Bristol winner. He's led the most laps, trying to seal the deal in the restart zone. Green flag. Yeah, you can see as he went to the Good jump by Edwards. Good Teammates up, battle up, for second. Door, quarter, clear yeah, up, clear up, clear worked up. with him. Yeah, he did. He let him get up. So Bush let Harvick in for second. Some great battles going on out oh, that, there. They're getting look, aggressive, super 20, aggressive. Uh, 24 car is really, really strong right now. Three wide going into turn one here. Newman on the bottom trying to take advantage of those two Fords. Remember, these are newer Yikes. tires by these. Nobody these gives 17. an inch. Yeah, the 38s on old out. tires. And Ricky Stenhouse is coming. Yeah, and Bipple's already gotten by the 38 here. The cars with fresh tires started 14th and on back. And they're fighting hard to get up into these top 10 spots. I'm really watching the up here with running for fight for third right now between Kurt Busch and uh, Chase Elliott. And I'll tell you, Chase is a little quicker than Kurt, but hadn't been able to figure out how to make the move on him yet. Yeah, what Chase has got to do is build the gap between himself and the 22 and Logano behind him and then get that big run off the corner, do that slide job that we saw him do earlier. Last time we saw him do that, he almost ran out of room in turn two. And we heard some of the drivers, I think it was Kevin Harvick, talk about the rubber, how it gets laid down on the racetrack. It comes in patches. It doesn't come evenly. So you have to straddle it in certain areas of the corner. You've got to avoid it in other parts of the corner and others. You've got to run right over it or you don't have a choice. And it really only adds to all the challenges here at Bristol. Rookies Elliott in fourth and Blaney in sixth. And into the wall goes Ty oh, Dillon man. off Dale Earnhardt Jr., but he keeps going. Dale Jr. used eight tires that time. Now, Ty's one of those that stayed out that last pit stop. he got a tire rub now, the 14 does. I'm not sure about that one. Dale Jr. really used him up. Up in turns three and four. Well, it's time to go. I mean, there's 45 oh, yeah. laps to 45 go. 45 laps to go. You don't, you know, you got to put it all on the line You're now, boys. You're not cutting anybody any breaks. Definitely got a rub or did you shove you up there. Castle and Bain fighting right behind him. Then De Benedetto and Newman. Boy, I don't like that rub on 14. It's pretty bad. Eric Almirola back in the race, laps down after being towed to the garage. You know, at this point, DW and Mike, what can you do? You got to stay out. You got a tire rub at this point with only 40 something laps to go. You got to stay out. You got to risk it. Maybe a caution comes out. You can fix it under caution, but I really don't think you can come in at this point. Bain oh. passes Dylan for 12. Dylan crosses back under. Nice crossover move. I think a caution is going to come out, out all right. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I know yeah, where it's going to come from. I don't know if that's good or bad. All right, Castle to the bottom there. 
Whoa, oh, whoa, there it no, is. No. There it is. Damn. And there goes Dylan hard into the turn two now wall. Caution, now caution, now this caution. time we have a caution. Boy, Cal's so used to it. Wow, he, no, I mean, he just ran over he him. He body slammed yeah. him. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he just ran over him. Cut the left rear tire. Is this... All right, let's first go back to when Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Ty Dillon got together. Now remember, both these cars are on the lead lap. They're fighting for position. Watch this. Junior gets a big run, run on him. Just up the hill he goes. And he just basically did the same, same thing of what, the, what Landon Castle just did. And here's what just happened as Dylan battled Landon Castle. Now Landon gets loose here. He really didn't want to get into him. He got loose, got aggressive with it. Man. And Martin Truex Jr. gets the free pass and gets back on the lead lap. This guy's always right with 25, 30 laps to go. They just kind of unplug things. Yeah, the patience is out the door now. Landon Castle's best career finish, fourth at Talladega, fall of 2014. And he was 14th when this happened. You're getting your money's worth today, ain't you? Yeah, I just kind of waited for it. It just kept sliding. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, uh, you have an opportunity here. This 38 is a, he's a great kid. He's done a great job today. But you've got to learn how to close the deal. Yeah. That's, that's I, so important. I was worried about them when they didn't come in and pit on that last pit stop. That, that's what really got them up there was some great pit strategy. But at that point, I think, especially starting on the inside lane, he would have been better off getting tires and being able to just maintain that speed and having the grip in the tires. Well, we still got 38 laps to go. Yeah, it might still work out for him. He's still in the lead lap. Chris Myers. Yeah, Mike, we've already had the most cautions of any race so far this year. Problems in the pits, uh, pit road speeding penalties, adding to the issue early with Kozlowski, Kyle Busch, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Joey Logano had an uncontrolled tire causing a problem and a little bit of a collision with Denny Hamlin and Brian Scott. Yeah, it tears Hamlin's right front fender off. He had some issues in practice yesterday with that same area of the car and it was weak, tore it apart. They replaced it, later blew a tire and ended his day. Martin Truex Jr., the lug nut gamble. Yeah, and that's just exactly what the crew guy's saying there. He hit three. The jack man dropped the jack. All he had on was three, put him down, but they've recovered now, got a free pass just this caution. Jimmy Johnson, we've heard a lot about tires and loose wheels, had to come in under green, went a couple of laps down. And with the Toyotas of Joe Gibbs being so dominant, but having problems today from Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards is your leader. He's led the most laps in this race more than any other race in his career. Is that in the back of his mind oh. saying my teammates have had issues? No doubt. It doesn't matter what his crew chief tells him about those tires. He's worried about it. He's seen his guys go down, hit the wall, causing the issues to their cars. He's got a fast car. He's just waiting for something to go wrong. Carl is ready, though. That car is really strong. I don't see anybody getting around him, Chris. Trying to win his fourth Bristol race as we head back upstairs to Jeff, Darrell, and Mike. Your first nine cars have 40, 50 lap tires. Your next six cars have 20 laps on their tires. Your next five cars have brand new tires. How does this play out? Well, it's going to be intense and exciting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how, I think those, this play? <laughs> those first couple rows, I mean, it's a battle among them at this point if it goes green all the way to the end. If we see more cautions and some of those newer, fresher tires can get up there and maybe get in that outside lane, they might have something to say about it. But to me right now, it's between the 4 and the 19 and who's going to be super aggressive on these restarts. What's more important right now, how old are your tires or what lane are you restarting in? Well, we've seen all day the lane you start in is the most important thing. But the other most important thing right now is the speed, uh, just like I said about Landon Castle, you got to close the deal. Right. You've run good all day. Carl Edwards has dominated this race all day. You got to close the deal. But the intensity level oh. is <laughs> rising. <laughs> Didn't think it could get any higher, but it can. We'll restart with 35 laps to go. Carl Edwards on the outside of Kevin Harvick. In row two, Harvick's teammate, Kurt Busch, inside of Chase Elliott. Behind them, Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney. In row four, Casey Kane, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And the top ten, Jamie McMurray and Greg Biffle. Here's some audio from the leaders. The furthest we've gone on tires is 63, green, 15, yellow. The most we could possibly go on this set is going to be right at 67 laps, something like that, green. We've got 30, 33 green now and 36 to go, so that's... 69 minus whatever these yellows are. 
So when we get to the checker, your tires are going to be shot. Ah, yeah, I'm not but exactly right in, sure how to take that. No, but they're right in the window. That's what they're telling him. Yep. We're right in our window. We're good to go. I don't know if I heard good to go. <laughs> Green flag Logano doesn't go. He holds up McMurray as everybody shoots around the two of them. Edwards, the leader, Chase Elliott battling Lucky. for second. When was the last time a rookie won this race? 79, Dale Earnhardt. Well, we got be, one that's looking right now. I know it's not time to be patient, but you know he's got to really pick and choose his battle here. Because if he's going to make that move, he's got to make it precise and clean. Logano finally got going. He's back in 17th. Yeah, and he had worked so hard to get himself back up in the top 10. All for naught. I love, love, love the aggressiveness of Chase Elliott on the outside on that restart. That's what you got to do if you're in that outside lane. You got to make it work. What I'd be happy about is I got a little gap between me and the car running third right now. That little gap gives you a little room to breathe. Yeah. Showing great speed. Watch the orange 22 of Joey Logano oh, that's stacking just... things up there. And McMurray nowhere to go. Look very similar to the 88 earlier. Looked like he missed. I think he might have missed a gear. I think he missed it. What did he say? Shift, he said he lost all power. Todd oh. Gordon told him to switch to battery two. Exactly the same incident we saw at the start of this race with the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. The, the batteries take a beating here. I don't know if you remember or not, but remember Bowman is showing he lost his battery here a couple, three years ago. The batteries really get take a beating here with all this banking and how rough the track well, is. Well, and all the fans and, and loads that are on those batteries, DW, if you don't shut all those things down under caution and because you don't have the RPMs under caution, it'll really eat up that battery. This is the calmest we've seen the top 10 all day. Back to Ricky Stenhouse in 10th. All on the same straightaway, but all single file trying to eat up some of these remaining 28 laps. Yeah, this is just like a track meet. Everybody's saving a little kick. They're going to kick it in here with about 15 to go. All three of the Roush cars, 8, 9, 10. Biffle, Bain, Stenhouse. Yeah, that, that caution uh, really worked out for them when they put four tires on uh, the two cautions ago. Mike, you can check with our stat guy. When was the last time we were even talking about the three Roush Fenway drivers finishing in the top ten? It has been a long, long time. Yeah, nice to see. Okay. Carl Edwards pulling away as we watch this battle for ninth place. Eighth place now, Bain and Stenhouse. I mean, I think this is the battle right here for second, the four of Kevin Harvick and Chase Elliott. I think Harvick's car is just a little bit better on these long runs. Chase has the speed on the short run, and he's doing an awesome, awesome job. But I think Harvick desperately wants to get by because I think he feels like he's got a car that can compete with the 19. Another driver who's had a great run today is Matt DiBenedetto, who wowed the crowd in driver introductions when Bill Goldberg called for him to come out. He came out to his easy top song, and he was dressed as Billy Gibbons with a big, long, flowing beard and strumming a guitar. But DiBenedetto's had a great run here. He is currently in the top 10. Great run for him. Another guy with a great run is that 15 car of, uh, of Clint Boyer. We haven't seen that car anywhere near the top 10. And whoa, Carl is that the, the 78? Off of two? No caution, I don't believe, though. Nope. Martin Truex. Uh, maybe it's the 11. Was it the 11 no, it was, or the 78? It was Truex grinding the wall in turn two. They've just about run out of room over there. They have taken that groove right up to the wall. About run out of room for cautions on my page. <laughs> yeah, Way up to the top. So he did a yep. slide job when the three lost his momentum, and as he got into the corner, the back just came around and got loose on him, and he... Had to walk it all the way up into the wall. Mike, another guy that, I mean, who would have given uh, Dale Jr. A, a chance of finishing in a top 10 after the start of this race? And there he is running six. Well, if you're going to have your problems and go a couple laps down, do it early. All right, traffic becomes a factor for Carl Edwards. He slapped uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt there. Now goes to the outside of Josh Wise. Michael Annette is next. And uh, Larry, our stat pack says that August 2014, the night race is the only time here since 2012 that uh, Roush Fenway had three cars in the top 10. Stenhouse, Edwards, and Biffle were 6th, 7th, and 10th. We've kind of been seeing this coming, though. They've been getting a little bit better every week. Like we said, uh, Stenhouse kept a good, had a couple of good runs. Baines had a couple of good runs. Now all three of them are having a good run today. Harvick right on the bumper of Chase Elliott now. 
Yeah, this Chase is, took a little more time getting through traffic, and Kevin is right there. Yeah, this is, oh, is it, Harvick got Whoa, real loose. He's 46. got a problem. Does he have a problem? Around goes Annette after contact. All right, now let it caution. roll, let it roll. No caution, no caution. Let it roll. Caution's out, caution's out. You know who this is going to hurt? Who's he going to hurt? I think it's going to hurt to 24. Yeah, because he's going to be starting on that inside lane. Yep. And did Kevin Harvick get up and into the wall there? Yellow's Look at, gone yeah, on you, the right sides as well here. Exactly. You can't see the letters oh, on the right front tire. Yeah, it's kind of loose. Here's what happened. Yeah, he's wanting to put that pressure on the 24 car. Drove it in there really, really hard and just got that spot. Yeah, he just, wow, he just scraped. that's weird. Oh, and he's yeah. the one that ended up getting into the 46. I didn't realize right. that's yeah. what caused that wreck. Yeah, he kind of just ricocheted off that outside wall. Bad, bad timing for Annette, unfortunately. Watch this. That's it. Go get him. Oh, easy inside, inside. I got him, I got him. You, Kevin. No yellow yet. Michael Annette was in a bad spot Keep there. Digging. He's just riding along. Right. <laughs> All of a sudden, you know, Kevin Harvick comes off the wall loose and hits my right front and spins me around. He's all right. Chris. Mike, the team talking back and forth with Kevin Harvick. He's speaking with Rodney Chillers, asking if either of those rear tires down. Rodney Chillers is telling him both sides look good, and our only option is to stay out. Logano Pitts. Along with Landon Castle, Brad Keselowski, the free pass car, and Paul Menard. I, I don't see this working out too well. I mean, there's no, 14 laps to go. Not many cars came down pit road. It's going to be really hard to use those four fresh tires to get by many of the cars ahead of them. No really issue with the track. There's no debris. There's nothing wrong with the track. We're probably looking at one to go next time by. Yeah, maybe they're anticipating a lot of cautions. If they can get a lot of cautions, keep picking up spots on the on the restarts, maybe. We're going to be with about uh, 10, 11 laps to go. I just don't see that working out. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with merging vets and players dedicated to, to ensure our nation's warriors can be as productive off the field as they were on. They join combat veterans with former athletes to form a common bond over dedication and teamwork. You can visit foxsportssupports.com to learn more. One to go. Now I can tell you who this is really you see benefited. that tank. I'd like to have that tank <laughs> right about now with one to go. Hey, Guys. Larry, this has really benefited the 41 car in that fourth position. You know, he's in that outside lane now in the preferred lane. But uh, what do you what do you have there, Larry? Well, I stayed up half the night looking at all <laughs> kinds of different trends. And when I look at our last 10 spring Bristol races, five times we went to overtime, including our last two trips here in the spring. And once again, we listen in to Carl Edwards team anticipating this restart. I put it on one and two on one and two for the end. Check them both, check them both, no equalize. They're almost the same battery too, it's 0 0.2 lower, 12.9 versus 13.1. And he's checking the voltage of his batteries. He wants the most power in that battery he can get. Give him uh, more yeah. power, Scott. I'd run them both. <laughs> yeah. If that's an option. And that's what he said he's yeah. doing. Yeah, both. Looks like we're going to go one more well, time. Two by. drivers have had uh, ECU issues here, and the cars failed to go on a start and then on a restart. And even though we have three different makes of cars competing, they all run the same ECU as dictated by NASCAR. That's a common part across all three makes. Well, and I, I think DW really brought up something important. This track with the loads and the banking and the bumps, you see how bumpy this concrete is, and then the loads on the fans and everything going on inside the car, it, it's really hard on equipment, even batteries and ECUs. Yeah, well, Carl has driven up. That, that, is, that car has been flawless all day long. Get up there, buddy, and close the deal. Had a lot of great performances, including Matt Benedetto, who is on track to perhaps score his best career finish. He was 18th at Talladega a I, year ago. I like he's in that outside lane. Ten laps to go when they come to the line. Carl Edwards against rookie Chase Elliott to decide it at Bristol. Look who's way up top, the 41, getting a big run down the back straightaway. Man, he's aggressive on these restarts. Boy, Chase better do something. Yeah, he's going to have to get in behind the 41. Long. Turn three, Regan Smith, hard into the wall. Caution. Caution. Breed. Caution. Uh, it's a double whammy 
for Chase Elliott because he was in second. Now he's in third. Brad Keselowski had taken the wave around and he went three wide and that pretty much forced the issue in turn three. Watch the seven center your screen. Two outside of Danica. And things narrow up here in a hurry. Well, it's just tight racing right there. I mean, the closing rate, a lot's happening at 125, 130 miles per hour right there. Well, the two cars got four brand new tires on his car. You know, to me, the seven has to know what's going on, you know, and, and know that those two cars are side by side. That's a spotter, mirror, and just Bristol issue. Well, when you're inside of 10, 15 laps to go, Jeff, you just can't give up anything, but you don't want to end well, up like and this. Well, and let's also remember Danica's got a brake pedal, too. You know, she could have lifted maybe a little bit there, but in the closing laps, as you said, DW, there's no checking up. At no, this you got to go for it. I don't want to hear about loose wheels or loose or pushing or anything else. Well, our short track slide continues next weekend. We head to Richmond. Beginning on Saturday with the Xfinity Series and the Toyota Care 250, noon Eastern time on FS1. Next Sunday, the Toyota Owners 400. Kurt Busch is the defending winner. That's 12.30 Eastern on Fox or watch live on Fox Sports Go. Formerly a night race, Richmond moves to a day race on Sunday. Then we're off to Talladega. And then Kansas on Mother's Day weekend on FS1. Mike, this is a, the great Coliseum, the last great Coliseum. And next week we're going to a racetrack that I think most drivers, Jeff, probably agree with this, think that's about the best racetrack that uh, these guys, we, the guys really love to race in Oh, Richmond. everybody loves it. I love going from this racetrack to another great short track oh, in Richmond. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tell you what I'm watching, you know, here for this restart is the 19, the only time the 19's lost the lead when he's been the starter is by the 41 car making a pass on him several uh, restarts ago. There's Colossus. Those Bristol letters at the top of that big screen, four sides wide, those letters that say Bristol are six feet tall. It's an immense video screen here for both auto racing and college football this fall. Yeah, they were all, they're almost as tall as Peyton Manning. And uh, you <laughs> saw him up here with that. He's pretty tall. <laughs> Fifteen caution flags so far. Evenly split between the first two thirds of the race and the last third, pretty much. My heart's beating. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I just think that I'm the, something's getting ready to happen. I mean, the intensity level I continues just, to rise. Now we've got Kurt Busch lined up side by side with Carl Edwards. You know everyone is going to be getting super aggressive here. Well, what about Dale Jr.? I mean, he's not out of this thing either, and, bud. And, and remember, the 19 and the 41 have not won races yet this year. They're not locked in to that chase, and they want to get it bad. Matt Benedetto's in the top 10. Clint Boyer's in the top 10. Trevor Bain, Ryan Blaney. This is anybody's race, but they're going to have to take it away from Carl if they're going to win it. Look at Jr. getting a great start. Let me tell you, don't count that 88 out. He's pretty darn good. Six to go. Junior doesn't have a win yet either this year. This could be big for him if he could get it. Nice clean restart. Right now, I think he's really happy being in that second oh, spot. I think he's <laughs> thrilled to death. I would be. What's the odds of this uh, finishing without another yellow? Not very good one I'm seeing. Wow, 41. Whoa, Big move. Man, it, it, Slide job to 88 makes a pass right back crossover. On this could get ugly right here. And that, boy, they are Going Carl again. Edwards' best friend right now. Oh, yeah. Boy, I was loving was, this. That was some great, oh, my gosh, that was great short track racing right there. And then you got Chase Elliott oh, watching. Oh, we got 41 got loose off the two, and here comes Chase. White flag, one more time. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Carl Edwards well out in front of a great battle for second place. Earnhardt, Bush, Elliott, and Bain for the top five. Checkered flag in the air. Carl Edwards dominates Bristol. What I'm talking about. Great work, guys. 
He led 276 laps and held off all comers. Was only passed once on a restart all day, as Jeff pointed out. He deserved to win it, and he held them all off. You just don't have many days like that at Bristol. It was flawless. Man, that was awesome, guys. Great job. And remember, he did this from the pole, earned that okay. number one pit stall, great pit stops, great restarts, great race car, great driving by Carl Edwards. And no right front tire problems. J.D. Gibbs there with the team prayer. And guess what this means? We haven't had a backflip this year. <laughs> That's right. Just be careful, now, brother. Be careful. How about Chase Elliott, the rookie fourth, Trevor Bain fifth, wow. Matt DiBenedetto sixth. sixth. Incredible. Wow. Clint, Boyer, Clint Boyer eighth. I'm happy. That, that oh, is so great for, for all those guys. Boyer will be ecstatic. He's been needing to run like this. I've got to wonder how tense this all had to be for Carl Edwards, knowing how much trouble his teammates uh -oh. had. Uh-oh. Spot the landing, buddy. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's in it's on the banking. Woo, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and now he'll collect the Sunoco checkered flag. I don't, I don't know another driver out there that gets more pumped up and excited to go racing and get a win and is more appreciative than Carl Edwards. Great guy. It's a long way to victory lane from here, but taking that Sunoco checkered flag is today's Sunoco fueling victory. Yeah, get that steering wheel on. We know what it. happens when no, that doesn't don't need get that. On, locked on. There's JD and the glasses and the hat. Getting a hug from Joe. There's Coach. Tell you that Gibbs bunch. They got it going on, boys. Awesome performance. As mayhem unfolded behind him. Carl Edwards drives to victory lane. And there's Sunoco fueling victories. I think the side of the car says it all, guys. Built for speed. The backflip is back. Carl Edwards dominates Bristol Motor Speedway.
On a well, day when Bristol was brutal to most, Carl Edwards dominates for his fourth victory here and celebrating there in victory lane with Carl Edwards, Matt Yoakum. Last year took 12 races before Carl Edwards scored a season's first top five. The win today marks your fourth. Expectations were high coming here. Reality now, looking at this performance, match that. <laughs> yeah. I, man, there's so many different things happening out there. Different guys are fast at different times. I got to work on my um, my drag racing stuff. Kurt's got those restarts figured out, man. He get, he, uh, he is tough. Just awesome, though. And um, real testament to my team. These guys have been working really hard. we got Comcast business folks here. They helped put this whole thing together with Aris and Toyota, TRD, Stanley, all the folks that made this 19 team happen. So. Um, just great, man. Just uh, awesome. Thanks to Sprint and Cessna, Xfinity, all the folks that make this happen. And yeah, I just uh, now we're we're in the chase. We can go have some fun. And um, yeah, just so cool, man. Awesome to be here. Near perfect day on pit road. Near perfect day on the racetrack. But was there concern looking your teammates keep experiencing issues again and again today? There was some concern. Um, but for some reason, you know, our car, we didn't have any of those issues. So just really proud of my guys. And um, once again, thanks to everybody, Subway and Stanley and just everybody that uh, sport clips that make this thing happen. This team is awesome. And Dave doesn't quit. He's he can almost read my mind in the race. He can tell me things right when I needed him. So uh, just a great day. One win here. Special Carl Edwards has four in Thunder Valley. And he's the uh, pole sitter. Last time a pole sitter won was last year in August. But at the start of the race with Carl on the pole, the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr., the electronic control unit, wasn't controlling very well. <laughs> and that got him a lap or two down with uh, Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers. And then he finished strong. In fact, his third, second place finish of the year, racing Kirk Busch on the restart. Yeah, can you imagine coming for last and then here at the end of the race having a chance to try to win this baby? And watch the determination here. Kurt with the slide job. Dale Jr. never gives up. Crosses over to the inside, grabs that second spot back away. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. still searching for that first victory. Vince is standing by with the driver of the 88. Looking at the final statistics and seeing Dale Jr. in second place doesn't even begin to tell the story. Started out with the issue right off the bat of the green flag, and then you guys had to dig all day long with a car that was far from perfect. How'd you end up bringing it home second? We got a lot of luck on those last several restarts to start on the outside and uh, gain some spots just, just being on the right lane. We didn't have a good enough car to run in the top five today, but the Greg and those guys did a great job getting our last back. We had a dead battery at the start of the race, something bad like that. Same thing I think happened to the 22, but um, and, uh, that cost us two laps early in the race and we worked real hard. Greg did a great job helping us get our laps back. The car was about a 15th, 10th place car. Um, just lucky on them last restarts where we lined up, you know, and that really helps. Yeah, they were pretty good down the stretch with uh, driver and crew chief making adjustments as well. So Carl Edwards for Joe Gibbs Toyota. Even when the Joe Gibbs Toyotas are, are, are having a bad day, they have a good day as he snaps an 18 race winless streak. And we'll talk to some guys you don't hear from who had great finishes.
at the Coliseum. A volatile, frantic day at Bristol all day. And look at some of the guys who finished. Chase Elliott, the rookie, Trevor Bain from Knoxville, Matty Benedetto up in the top ten. It's so great. And this track is such a great equalizer. Those bank turns can hold your car in place. And if you get the brakes like Dell Jr. talked about at the end, you can get in a special place. And he did mention the battery tied to the ECU unit, so it's an electrical problem. Chris Busher, the rookie as well. But Chase Elliott, the 20-year-old, had a chance at the end, wound up fourth. And Jamie Little is standing by with him. Well, Chase Elliott's coming off his best career finish of fifth, and today even betters that by one position. You made it look easy, but it wasn't. You were two laps down after a loose wheel at one point. How did you overcome that? I just had a, had a really good Kelly Blue Book Napa Chevrolet. Guys brought a fast car here this weekend and started off a little slow, didn't qualify as well as we wanted to on Friday, but we hit on a couple things. I thought right there towards the end of final practice yesterday that we really liked. Um, Unfortunately, that carried over today and, and was able to move forward. I hated to have a loose wheel, but stuff happens. Guys did a good job uh, having a good pit stop under green, only losing two laps, and, and it gave us a shot to get back one down and then try to get back to the lead lap. So it was a, a long day, but but definitely proud of the effort, and we're, uh, we're shipping away, just not close enough. Chase Elliott, first time in a Sprint Cup Series car at Bristol. He brings it home fourth. Trevor Bain, first top five since winning the Daytona 500. Congratulations. Long time coming. You guys earned it today. How good does it feel to be standing here with the top five? It's a really good streak to end, I guess, but uh, I'm just really proud of this race team, man. They're bringing me fast race cars every week, whether it's a mile and a half and now a short track. Uh, we knew this would be a weakness for us, and it's actually our strongest run of the year. So uh, I'm just really proud of what everybody at Roush Family Racing is doing. They're staying in the game. We're fighting hard, and our race cars are back where they need to be. Uh, I was looking around at the end of that race, and we're running seventh, eighth, and ninth, and that's uh, it's really cool to be battling my teammates for top tens. Uh, I'm just really thankful to Advocare and all their distributors that have st stood with us, and uh, we're on the right path, and I'm really excited about the things to come this season, uh, especially our mile-and-a-half program, but uh, this shows we can compete at the short tracks. Well done. Matt Benedetto brings it home six today. Matt, obviously a huge finish for this small team. Your thoughts? I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm so speechless. Just I'm so thankful to everybody on this team, everybody at BK Racing, Cosmo Motors in Hickory in North Carolina, they're local to me, he's my best friend, sell some awesome cars, please check them out. Um, everyone at BK Racing, Dussel's Blasting, I'm, these guys, man, that's unbelievable for you know, a team like us to be growing this much and for us to get a sixth place run, I'm sorry, I'm so emotional, it's just, this is like a win for us and I am so excited. I see my family back here, my wife, Taylor, it just my brother is in town from the military uh, and I'm so glad he got to experience this. This is just this is incredible. This is so I'm so blessed to be here. Big finish for BK Racing. And some really is touching comments. You could feel the emotion and how spent the 24 year old is with his uh, best finish. And this was pre race. Michael, you were down there and he shows you his range of personality from being emotional and then having fun prior to the race. Well, racing is such a a great opportunity for these kids to show their personality. And Matt Di Benedetto, I've known him for a year or so. I drove for this team down at Daytona, and he has so much energy and so much passion for the sport. And I love that they're cool enough to get out there and show that passion and be fun like that. And then when they have a run like he had today, get that top 10 finish and show how much it meant to him and his team. Yeah, his first career top 10 finish. And we know Carl Edwards was outstanding. But Kyle Busch, can I read you what he said? He said, this track has sucked for me ever since the uh, the grinding. This after the race, I'm about sick and tired of coming here since it sucks to race. That that's Kyle Busch, who's won here five times, but it's been a while. <laughs> Carl Edwards, his teammate, did get to victory lane. I think he has a different opinion of the track, <laughs> gentlemen. And a nice job up there. It was a brutal day from the start. Guys wearing out. It was frantic all day long. It was frantic, but we loved it. By the way, De Benedetto chose ZZ Top Sharp Dress Man as an intro music, so that's why he came out looking like Billy Gibbons or Dusty Hill. I loved it that so many drivers got one lap, two lap, even three laps down, were able to come back and battle for a top 10 finish. That's why they call this the Coliseum, yes. yeah. uh, you know, because you just can never give up. It's a battle for 500 laps. No matter what happens to you, just keep fighting, keep fighting. And a lot of great battles and fights that end up paying off for them. I, I love that battle for second there at the end between yeah. Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, but Carl Edwards, there was no denying him and that team today. They were so strong. And some great stories. I love that one right. with De Benedetto. Thanks for showing the emotion. Yeah, no kidding. I, I guess I put myself in Carl Edwards' place. I started on the pole. I've led this race all day long. 
what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> because I know you've been there, I've been there. Everything is perfect. Man, if I can just bring this baby home and went and get that checkered flag, and trust me, he was nervous right till they dropped yeah, the flag. And adversity all around him. All three of his teammates had trouble, and they had dominated all season long. But it was as close to a perfect race as you could imagine for Carl Edwards. Yeah, and Carl Edwards, uh, eighth was the worst after starting on the pole when everybody else, like the bad stock market, they were going up and down and back and forth here at the, the Coliseum. So the chase standings were eight races, and we have six different winners, Michael. You win, you're in the chase. Remember, 16 drivers get in for the last 10 races to decide the championship. And what's interesting is some of the guys that are still hanging on at the back end of that, Kurt Busch, notice, is in the top 10. Yeah, Kurt's going to be solid all year long, but you could see the relief on Carl Edwards' face when and he said, I am in the chase. And Kurt Busch with his best finish this season. He's standing by with our Jamie Little. Well, Tony Gibson, crew chief for Kurt Busch, told me this morning, we just didn't have good speed this week. And maybe a top 10 car, you were a lot better than that. Best finish of the year. What was the difference for you today, Kurt? We just battled through it. You know, uh, Junior had a trouble at the start, and that was 40th when we started the race. And one car at a time, one set of tires at a time. Uh, and then we were in great position around lap 350. Um, got the got the lead from Edwards for a little bit, and we just kept working on it. And there's nothing more that I could have gotten out of the car. I'm really happy with the way that everybody worked together. Uh, and you know, I shouldn't be happy about finishing third, but I'll take it. It's just a great effort, and the way that um, this team has come together, it, it's it's perfect. We just need to find that last little bit. So thanks to Haas Automation, Monster Energy, Chevrolet. It's just it's wonderful to have a good group of guys to go out there each week to have a shot at it, and I still don't think I'm supposed to be happy about finishing third, but Edwards ran a great race, so congrats to him. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you, good job. Well, Kevin Harvick, Brin's going to home seventh today. Kevin, you had one of the most dominant cars out there, but you're constantly restarting on the inside. Was that the biggest challenge? Yeah, definitely the biggest challenge for us. Uh, the guys did a great job with our Ditec Chevy to have the speed, but it seemed like every restart, we were just struggling to make ground on the, on the restart, and. Um, you know, by the time you get the two or three spots back, then you, you battle back to, to where you were, and then the caution come out again. But nothing you can do about that. We raced hard all day, and we'll go to the next one. Thanks, Kevin. Carl Edwards, fifth straight, top ten finish. He dueled at the end with Dale Earnhardt Jr. to fight him off. He's finished seventh or better in seven of the eight races this year. Thumbs up, backflip, 36-year-old Carl Edwards from Columbia, Missouri in victory lane. You know, the Las Vegas odds had him at 8-1. to one. The favorite in this race was Kyle Busch, followed by Kevin Harvick and Joey Logano. So he's in the chase. Now we go to Richmond, Virginia next Sunday 
on Fox, a three-quarter mile track. Another short track, but a different short track. Yeah, and Kurt Busch, he talked about how close his team was. He dominated this race a year ago. Chase Elliott made his first cup start, got a 16th place finish. That kid's going to be really good next weekend after a strong run here in Bristol. Carl Edwards has won at Richmond, and actually so has Kyle Busch, as we remind you. Tonight on Fox, The Simpsons, Bob's Burgers, and then Victory Lane over on FS1. We'll spend some time with the winner. For Daryl, Jeff, and Mike, Jamie, Matt, Vince, Chris, Michael Waltrip, and Peyton Manning, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being a part of NASCAR on Fox. Have a great week. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.